cardio training is a terrible way to lose body fat. Look, cardio can be healthy. It's amazing for stamina and endurance, but for fat loss, it just plain sucks. We've been saying this for years here at Mind Pump. Well, a study just came out that proved what we've been saying has been right all along. They did a study where they compared cardio versus strength training versus cardio plus strength training. Guess what performed the best? Strength training alone. <gasps> ding, 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 People ding. who did strength training alone had more muscle and more body fat than people who did cardio, for sure, and even a little bit better than people who combined cardio with strength training. So when it comes to fat loss, just do strength training. If you want to improve endurance and stamina, that's fine. Do cardio. But when it comes to fat loss, stop it, guys. Stop telling everybody to do cardio. It's a terrible approach. Oh, boy. Hey, We're all the hey, fitness clowns hey, that hey, were uh, trying to counter it. that conversation. Can I just, can I just tell you that because uh, we've been saying this for almost a decade on the yeah. show. Almost yep. a, for as long as we've been on the show, we've been saying this. Religiously. And this is the message that probably gets attacked the most yeah. by us. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's the fitness influencers. It's the, you know, the bros. It's the whoever. They're just married to that card. They're trying. They try so hard to take us down. And through the years, we've been proven right on many different subjects. And this one, uh, they haven't. There's studies that show that, you know, lean in the direction that we're talking. But this is the first one that showed cardio versus strength training versus strength training plus cardio. Yeah. And in that study, the strength training actually did a little bit better than the combination, which is pretty crazy. But it does go right along with the, what we explained with the mixed messages and signaling that you're sending the body and how cardio, yes, it burns more calories while you're doing it, but it actually teaches your body to become more efficient. It actually teaches your body to slow down its metabolism. Um, over time, and our theory is the evolutionary yeah. one. Nonetheless, it's proven. It's, it's there. You I go. think that's the most significant part is yeah. it, you know knowing that um, in combination with uh, resistance training and cardio didn't it even outperformed no. that. And so it's like okay, because that would have been a point of contention that I'm sure like most yes. trainers and coaches would have brought in. Well, yes. in conjunction together, you're gonna probably have. The yeah, best why wouldn't outcome. you do both? Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's been the argument and the challenge I've had in the competitive world since I got into that. I mean, it's still happening right now. It's also how I, when people ask me like, oh, how do I know if I have a good coach or not? I'm like, well, your coach sucks if the first thing he does is put you on cardio to start off your fat loss journey. If you are in a six, nine, 12, 18 week prep for a show and you're already doing cardio in the first couple of weeks, he sucks yeah. or she sucks, whoever's telling you to do that. Because for this exact reason right here, especially in on the competitive level when it is your job to hang on to as much muscle yep. as you can to present the best buff version of yourself on stage like that because if this is somebody who is like the average person and you want to have good cardio endurance and and heart health and you also want to lean out a little bit and you want to be strong Just include like, more movement in general yeah and, and even then it's like it's not a big deal if you lose a couple pounds of muscle i mean i guess i mean if you lose 15 pounds and five to seven uh, pounds of muscle also comes off of that. You don't really care then. Okay, whatever. But if you're in the business of keeping as much muscle as you possibly can and only reducing body fat, using cardio is a stupid strategy. A hundred percent. Look, cardio is the best, one of the best ways to improve stamina and endurance. Fact. Like if you're yeah. an athlete and you come to me and you say, you know, I want to uh, get better at distance running or I want more gas in the tank for my particular sport. Strength training definitely helps, but cardio, that's your go-to. Stamina endurance, that's your go-to. It also, when appro applied appropriately and properly, is good for you. So there's nothing wrong with it. <clears throat> but when it comes to just fat loss, in the context of just fat loss, okay? By the way, when you're talking about the average person, and we're talking about their health, like athletic conditioning is important. When we talk about the average person, what you want them to do is you need them to lose body fat, and you need them to have muscle. In fact, in this study, the other part of the study, is they measured uh, H, uh, let me read this to you. So they were measuring also how the body responded to, to insulin or blood glucose, HbA1c levels. That's directly connected to muscle mass. So uh, if you want insulin sensitivity, you're not going to be able to work out all the time. Um, and you're only going to pick one form of exercise. Like make it, make it, it's strength training by far is, yeah. is the most effective. But I mean, again, what's crazy about this is it even out, it, I mean, it was a small outperformance in combination, but 
Think about it. They did more work. Yeah, I was going to say, think yeah. about that. Like, yeah. why would you do more work for less results? Yeah, exactly. That makes yeah. no sense. Like, the argument was like, oh, it, it's just as good or maybe a little bit better, potentially. It's not. No. <laughs> it's worse. No. So why would you actually spend more time putting... And for the people that are, like, trying to make the argument of the heart health thing... Go interrupt your regular five by five training with 20 sets of squats and deadlifts and overhead presses. Yeah, yeah. You want watch how your heart gets pounding and how strong yeah, it gets yeah. from training that way. You do a cycle of that. Do a cycle of training where you're doing 20 rep ranges or supersetting or giant sets. And I promise you're going to be in pretty damn good cardiovascular health. I remember I told you guys a story when I made the bet with my my there's two of us. And I was like meathead training like crazy, but I was training hard, you know, and I was training a lot of stuff where I was doing supersets and I knew I was in good condition. You know, I wasn't in the best running condition, but I was in enough running condition to beat the shit out of my friends who were training, running all the yeah. time to get in shape for this little bike, whatever the uh, muddy buddy marathon thing oh, that yeah. we did. And it's like, you'd be amazed on how good of endurance that you can get if you train that way, even with weights. And mm -hmm. so this idea that you need to get on a hamster wheel and run really hard till you can't breathe. And that's the best way for you to lose fat and or the best way for you to get just endurance. It's not. There's plenty of ways to do that through strength training. It, 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 well, I mean, look, if you were to look at, you know, health and longevity, we'll put that in a category. So health, longevity, performance, uh, and athletic performance. What, you know, there's a lot of crossover there, right? But then there's the extremes, right? You can push performance to where you're taking away from health and longevity. And then, of course, if, you know, health and longevity – if you're maximizing that, you're not maximizing performance. When we're talking about athletic performance, now we're looking at all the tools and we're looking at how to use them the best way. Okay. That's, that's, that's a fact. But the average person, the average person listening to this podcast is like, I got three days a week to work out. Yeah. I want to get lean. I want to feel good. And I don't have tons of time that I can spend at the gym. What do I do? I have 45 minutes to an hour, three days a week. Strength train. Strength train. What about the days off? Walk more. You've got it. That's it. That's like 95%. Yeah. Most everybody wants to be healthy, fit, strong, and have flexibility in their diet and look good, right? Those are like the five yeah. core tenets that you get from almost every single person that's ever hired me are those. Mm -hmm. You get the occasional one out of a hundred that's a very specific athlete or competition or right. thing that we're trying to do. Like that's so rare. Almost everybody listening will fall in those five categories. And the best way to do that is through weight training yep. and mm -hmm. proper diet. Those two things will give you all five of those attributes. Talk about the good timing too yep. for Dr. Lyon's book, uh, which, which oh, yeah. Released, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. muscle centric yeah. medicine. And right, her, what's her, how does she say it? You're, we're, you're, not, we're, we're not, we're not over fat. fat. We're under muscle. We're under muscle. I mean, mm -hmm. and we agree with that. Uh, yep. That's what we've been talking about for a long time. She's a hundred percent right. This study is, proving um, that she's right. Um, I mean, I, I what's cool about this is I think this is going mainstream because this, this this study went mainstream, right? So big news organizations. Yeah, New York Times picked right. it up. Yeah, or, or picking it up and Stanford talking about study, it. Right? Yeah, yeah, and um, that's cool because still today, the average person would not consider strength training as a fat loss or longevity form of exercise. They still think of it as like, oh, you build, yeah. you build muscle and strength, maybe athletic performance. But when it comes to health and fat loss, that they don't think about it. And so I'm glad that this is coming out because the revolution, right? That's mm -hmm. that's what we've been talking about. I think it's we're at the beginning of it. I think we're at the beginning of strength training getting um it's uh, you know, it's due, right? Yeah. It's it's gonna get its due. It's people get the academic bump finally. Yes. So now it's and what's gonna happen, it's gonna take another five years or so, but yeah. uh doctors are gonna start preaching it and the average person is gonna start. A, you know, applying strength training. And, and I know what will happen in the beginning. It's going to be done wrong. It's going to be a bunch of circuits and all that stuff. But eventually people are going to figure out like, oh, in order to do this properly, I have to train like those, you know, meatheads that I thought were just meatheads or whatever. But that yeah. seems to be the most, you know, that's that's the way to, to, to do this. Um, I wonder if this, uh, how this, uh, you know, I didn't read it as deep as you did, how, how this can support the case for, uh, the um, empty stomach, you know, walking on the treadmill in the morning time before your day starts mm. versus the guy or girl who gets on the Stairmaster and bangs out an hour. I mean, this is how... Fasted cardio? Yeah. So, And I, I don't even like calling it fasted cardio because I'm not hitting my cardio threshold. It's walking. It's low Just level. Movement. It's low level intensity, steady state. It's like literally walking at speed 3.2 on a treadmill, which is a little bit faster than casual stroll. 
-hmm. on a treadmill for an hour, first thing when you wake up fasted like that, was the amount of cardio cardio training I would consider doing when I was competing. Yeah, but I think, and you've brought this up, uh, I think the benefits of it, I mean, it's good, it's activity, right? It's the early movement. It's, it's, it's Getting up an hour early and moving. It's the behavior yeah. that it encourages, right? It gets you to move as soon yeah, as you wake discipline. up, which you know studies will show if you wake up and start moving, you're more likely to move uh, later on, unless you beat yourself up in the morning, uh, in which case it's the opposite. Um, also sets the stage for more consistency and discipline with your diet. So when they do studies on exercise, what they find is when people start working out consistently, a significant percentage will also start simultaneously working on their diet. It's not true in the reverse. People who start to diet don't necessarily start to go exercise as a result of it. So I think it's the behaviors, really. I think waking up, it also encourages you to probably go to bed early because you know you're gonna wake up and do the walk. Yeah, I mean, you get up, you get up earlier, which is def also makes me tired or at that night. I get up, I start the day with walking. Right, this isn't what I'm doing right now. This is what I was doing when I was competing. Right, so I get up, walk at six o'clock in the morning till seven o'clock. Why I'm walking, I'm like also like mentally planning out my day of eating. Yeah. Like the first meal I eat is a good healthy choice. Versus, had I not done that, could have easily slept in until seven thirty, eight o'clock slow to get going. Maybe I make a good choice. Yep. Maybe I make a bad choice eating first, my first meal. So you're right. I'm sure there are, there's a lot of the psychology plays into that also, but I think it just supports that as being a better strategy than getting on a Stairmaster at, you know, four o'clock in the afternoon yep. and, you know, sweating till I, you make puddles below. You. I think, and this is the case that I, that, uh, you know, we made in, uh, the resistance training revolution. I think when you're talking about the average person, you have to, you absolutely have to consider, minimum effective dose because you just you're not going to get most people to work out all the time yep it, just, it ain't going to happen everybody relax like the, the people in the fitness space who keep preaching this hardcore message of fitness you're only talking to fitness fanatics mm -hmm. that's the only people that are receiving that message the average person we did this for for two over two decades we trained people when i got really good i got to the point where i could get the average sedentary person to exercise structured exercise two or three days a week on their own. And that was like a massive success. And I'm talking about consistent, right? Now they're going to do this for the rest of their life. <clears throat> We're not going to get the average person to turn into a fitness fanatic. It's not going to happen. So we have to look at minimum effective dose. What do we do in the amount of time that's going to be realistic for the average person that's going to give them the most bang for their buck? Yeah. And it's in, in look, you're not going to be able to string together multiple modalities of exercise in that. Well, you're just not yeah. strength training. Just, so, just, Oh, here, do strength training two days a week. And then on the other days, just find ways to be a little more active, not structured, but, you know, park farther away from the store, mm -hmm. walk for five minutes or 10 minutes after breakfast, lunch, and dinner, go for a walk, you know, with your wife afterward, after work, whatever, just those things right there. And the, the return that they'll get muscle is so protective that when you build it, it protects you from your normal sedentary, you know, modern Western society life. Yeah. Having more muscle is such a, uh, it, it, it's such a buffer against that. It's so important to do that. Unless look, you're going to live, I don't know, like a, like a hunter gatherer. I mean, good luck. You know, uh, you're not going to be moving all day. Nobody does. It's just, it's just too hard. You have to plan it. I mean, look at our job, even yeah. what we do when we're, we're in the fitness space and we're sitting down 90% of the time <laughs> while we're at work. Yeah. We gotta, we gotta be focused on planting seeds that, you know, grow within uh, these potential people we want to change. So it becomes their own intrinsic motivation, their own uh, pursuit. Like really the, the entire journey of it is theirs. I, I think that it, it's a weird thing as a fitness coach, we get this ownership over that and we, we want to like steer and control. Uh, and that only lasts so long, even if it does, uh, if they do accept it and, and, the, and they, uh, and they, they get some kind of motivation externally from you, it's, it's very temporary. So, uh, you know, we have to like approach it a lot differently to be able to, to get that pull and to, to make those smaller, uh, incremental changes is such a better way to look at it. Did you see my Instagram story the day that this came out, mm -hmm. this study? Okay. So I, I posted about it and, and, you know, put, oh man, where did I hear this from? And did like a, a funny post of us and then, you know, referred to your book. Right. 
and I hadn't been on, I hadn't been on Amazon to look at your book sales in a long time and see like in the reviews, like it's got almost like a thousand reviews. And I think the average is like 4.7 or 4.8 out of five stars or whatever. And I actually went through and was like reading some of the reviews. I actually wanted to see the ones that didn't make five. Like mm -hmm. I wonder what people said yeah. negatively about yeah, this book. How dare you? You know, the irony of what, what, <laughs> what? The, the ones, the people that start at four. So like everybody five started, some people four started. So it gave it an average of 4.7 or 4.8. Do you know what the, what the one thing was? No. This right here. Cardio. Cardio. Oh. Oh, I, the people would say things like, oh, this was a phenomenal book. I love everything. In it. I agree with most of it. You know, that would be like a four star. Yeah. But, you know, I, there's some things I don't agree with in regards to cardio. It was <laughs> cardio was like the one thing that people still can't hang on to. They cannot grasp that. How could this be possible? Why would these fitness guys be recommending that as a, as a, the primary fat loss tools to be strength training and to ignore it's the really cardio burned strategy. in the cultural. It is like, I, I just thought it was so funny that, uh, like how many people were raving about the book and that's the one thing they just don't want to accept. Today's giveaway is maps aesthetic. Here's how you can win that program. Leave a comment below this video on the first 24 hours that we drop it, subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comments section. We're also running a sale this month. Our beginner strength training program, MAPS Resistance, is half off. And then our correctional exercise program, which helps with pain, mobility, will help you get a better bench press, deadlift, squat, overhead press. That's also 50% off. So if you're interested, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. Just look, I want to be clear. Like if I could construct the perfect, you know, routine. It would include cardio. For the average person. It would have strength training as the foundation. You would have cardiovascular conditioning in there. You would have mobility and flexibility training. There would be yeah. a, uh, a a awareness practice, something like meditation or prayer or some kind of a spiritual, you know, that bring makes you present. That would be in there as well. Yeah. And then there would be like sleep and lifestyle. I mean, if I could construct something perfect, then then that's it would include all that stuff. But we got to stop preaching perfect because it doesn't exist. It just doesn't it's, exist. Yeah. So what we need to do is tell people if you're going to do one thing, which is probably, which is we're lucky if we get you to do one thing and maintain it. And your goal is to lose fat, uh, reduce your risk of diabetes, reduce your risk of, of cancer, improve mobility, yeah. give you the best shot at longevity. Well, oh, and make you look good. What and supplements it feels good, like weight training the, the most yeah. mobility. Yeah. I would argue it's even more valuable in cardio. Oh yeah. And so, and that's not even a thought anybody has, no. you know, and it's, it's just one of those things. It's like, uh, I, I think it's something about it being mindless, you know, like the cardiovascular, yeah. we could just like get in the rhythm. Like I like that. I just like, sort like, it's a psychological thing. I think that is the draw for people. Well, there's oh, I think there's the, there's a, there's a physical and visual thing that's going on with it too. I mean, if you eat less and go run your ass off every single day for two weeks, the scale will go down yeah. and you'll look smaller. That too, yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? So there is, the, and that's the major disconnect. And that's why some people are so staunch about arguing this. Like, oh, these guys don't know what they're talking about. Yeah. I mean, I, I lost 15 I lost pounds, 15 pounds yeah. last month uh, running like crazy yeah, every day. Yeah. It's like, and so in their head, there's no way you're going to convince them otherwise that this is a better strategy. Now, what we know happened mm -hmm. to that person who lost 15 pounds by cutting calories and running every single day is they lost 80% muscle. And so they really didn't get any healthier. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? All they did was, smaller. and they lost a little bit of body fat, but they also lost equal amount or more muscle. So you're not in a better place. You think you are because you went down a pant size, but you're not a healthier version of yourself. You're arguably healthier when you were heavier. So yeah, it's man. like trying to convince that person that has, felt that and physically seen that is the is probably one of the greatest challenges well, we're talking that we have. Fat it's a big loss. hurdle we have yeah we're talking fat loss not weight, weight. loss yeah, yeah, yeah big difference yeah very big difference just weight and muscle also you know you don't want to just build muscle you want healthy muscle you know what was illuminating was when we talked to Dr. Gabriel Lyon she said you know we measure lean body mass but we haven't had we do now but, it, but a lot of people don't have access to them we never really measured muscle quality. Yeah. And she used this wonderful analogy. She said, look at a ribeye steak and look, a, look at a filet. What a great visual. Yeah, like, like having fat within the muscle. And she says, now athletes will as well, but that's access for energy. It's very different than a sedentary muscle that's peppered with fat within it. A fit, healthy muscle has less of that and it looks more like a filet. So now all of it measures the lean body mass. So that's the thing. So before, right, with, with normal um, testing. Mm -hmm. So it's not just the amount of muscle you have. It's also the quality of muscle. And then that's a storage vessel for glycogen, which comes from carbohydrates and sugar, which, you know, look, you, in, everybody talks about insulin resistance and its effects on health. 
um, you know, a significant, there's a significant percentage. It's not a majority, but it's a large enough percentage where it raises eyebrows. A significant percentage of people who develop type two diabetes are not overweight. They're not even overweight. Mm -mm. They're like normal weight. And yet they develop this issue that we, we attribute to obesity. It's not obesity. It's sarcopenia. It's loss of muscle. It's the muscle, the or the, it's a the hormonal muscle uh, uh, organ of muscle is not healthy, or you don't have enough of it, and this is what's causing a lot of those issues. And then that causes issues with the rest of the body, um, especially increasing cancer risk. You look at the cancer reduction risks of uh, building muscle, and it's profound. I think it's like twenty five percent drop across the board hmm. just from building muscle and doing nothing else. Well, I'm, I'm so glad you brought up the point that like, if I were to construct the perfect, healthiest, fittest version of myself or my client's day or routine, of course, it would include all of these great Everything. practices. It would include cardio. It would include spiritual gratitude or prayer. It would include, but you know, it's so funny. It's like the way I look at cardio is in that same realm of spiritual spirituality. It's not like somebody who was 200 pounds overweight came to me. I'd say, you know what? Just go home and pray about it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And let me know, get back to me in a month and see how that goes. That's where cardio gets in, 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 in that journey for me. It's like, First, I'm going to tell the, the client the big rocks. Like, let's let's address building muscle. Let's address balancing out your nutrition. Then when we get those rocks in, it's like, hey, maybe we'll add a gratitude practice in there. Oh, maybe we'll add some some cardio once or twice a week. Maybe we'll start adding these other things that is going to enhance your health, enhance your life, that have tremendous value. But there's an order of operation of what matters most in the pursuit of being a healthier version of yourself. And cardio is not at the top of the list. You know what? The, another challenge with uh, cardio for the average person uh, is that they perceive it as a simpler form of exercise because they go, well, I could just go run. Like I could just go lace up my shoes, go outside and run or ride a bike, not realizing that, that those physical activities are skills. They've never been taught how to run. Probably. Yeah. And if you haven't run a lot since you were 12 and now you're 35 mm -hmm. or 40 and you decide you're going to run to fatigue, first off, your technique's already off right out the gates because you never run. So right. you stopped running when you were a kid. You don't run anymore. Now you're going to go run and then you're going to run to fatigue. First, your form's already off anyway. So stuff's going to start hurting and then you get fatigued and stuff gets even, your technique gets even worse. Yeah. This is why the injury rates are oh, so high. Your knees go, then right. it goes to the hips. Now the beauty of strength training, although it seems more complex. Now the truth is there's a lot more variety with strength training. There's a million and one different ways to do different exercises. It's super adaptable. I think that's a strength of it, not its weakness. However, here's what's, here's what I, I, I think is great about strength training. People typically, not always, right? Because if they do a class like body pump or circuit or whatever, but typically if they go to strength training the real way, like I'm going to go get stronger, there is an emphasis on technique. There is an emphasis on form. There's a right way to do it. Whereas with running, it's like, well, let's just go run until we're tired. All right, John, let's go. And we're mm -hmm. going to go until we're, we're totally tired. And then the injury risk goes to the roof. So I think there's this misconception that it's this easier, safer maybe way of, of working out. It's not. Um, running is a skill. You lose that skill. It's going to take a while to build it up. I used to tell my clients uh, who decided that they wanted to train for endurance sports. And, and there was a place by my studio where there were running coaches there. And they would actually record you running, find the right shoe for you, and then they'd coach you. And I'd tell them, look, if you came to me and you said you wanted to compete in powerlifting and you've never lifted weights, I'd tell you, well, if we want a good chance at this, let's train for six months to a year first and really perfect <coughs> things. Make sure you can actually squat and deadlift and press. So I told them, go hire a running coach and train with them until your running technique is so good that even when you get tired, your form doesn't break down too much. It would take them a year to mm. get to that point. And then they could run without developing issues. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you're asking for trouble. I think we just overcomplicate this. Uh, I think it's not. I mean, literally, uh, deadlift, squat, overhead press. I'm going to make the big five, three. Go practice those three movements and start with a weight so light you feel super safe and comfortable with it until you get the technique down. And then slowly add a little bit more weight yeah. every time you show back up and do that. You do those three movements and you practice them in the gym with a weight that you feel comfortable with doing that you won't hurt yourself and you slowly add weight every single time you come back to the gym because you, you build confidence in that movement, you're going to see profound changes to your body. Do that literally three times a week. Practice those three movements. Or even how about this? Uh, you know, home gyms are getting more popular. Now I know they take up a lot of space. Now there's companies like PRX that literally design them. They have equipment designed specifically to use minimal space, like very minimal. It folds into the wall, the squat racks, and all that stuff. It's pretty cool. 
I think the average person would benefit from doing like two exercises a day. Mm -hmm. Like go out to the room with the rack, get the barbell, three sets of this, three sets of that, done. And just do that every single day. I think that would benefit the average person more than anything. Oh, I mean, 100%. I mean, I'm, I'll, I'll just take three days. I don't even every day. I'll yeah. take three days. Three yeah. days of those yeah. three movements, or you can divide it up over six days and do two and two. Yeah. However you want to do it. But I just said, there's a, there's a, a, a million different ways we can set it, put it all together. And the, and the problem with our space is we argue so much about like, who's more right about it. And we use these studies to try and prove yeah. our points. And it's like, meanwhile, we lose the masses of people that are so intimidated to start moving in the right direction because it seems so complicated. And who do I follow and whose program should I do this? And what diet should I do? It's like, dude, cut out processed foods, eat whole foods. Don't even worry about how much, just eat whole foods. Literally just get rid of the, the process shit. See what happens there. Hey, do these three to four exercises. Just practice them. Don't worry about sets and reps and weight and how many days of this. Like, Just practice them. Get good at them. Yep. And then once you get good at them and proficient at the movement, add a little bit of weight. Then after all the results that will come from that, the, the you eliminating processed foods and practicing those movements, because you're going to get, I'm telling you right now, for the next three to six months, you're going to see results just from that. Yeah. Then when those start to slow down, then go invest in a program. Yeah, now we then dial go, it in. Then go look at your, find your favorite fitness person to tell you how to get more nuanced about everything. But for right now, yeah. the, just doing that will make massive changes in 85% of the population I right know. now. I know. E easily, yeah. I know. I love it. I love it. I think it's great. I think uh, we're about to see mainstream start to adopt this, um, which is exciting to me. It's exciting because I remember as a trainer, God, do you guys remember noticing this in gyms when you were, when you first started? You go into, and I look, by the way, I'm going to say this like straight up. I thought for a long time, cardio was the best way to burn body fat. Yes. Okay. As a trainer, like you, if you had asked me mm -hmm. when I became a trainer at 18, probably till the age of 24 or 25. Okay. So for a while you asked me, Hey, Hey, I want to lose a lot of weight real fast. I only want to do one form of exercise. What should I do? I probably would eh, probably cardio. You should strength train too, but probably cardio if you really want to lose body fat. But what I kept noticing in the gyms were my group X instructors versus my female trainers or my members that would come in regularly to hop on a treadmill and a bike versus my members that would go into the weight room, men and women. And they just, it just, they look different. They look so different. Like the people who strength train consistently, their bodies look different. They looked leaner. They looked healthier. Um, it, it didn't look like it took as much work. My group X instructors, they would bust their asses teaching class. I mean, like hours of cardio a day, teaching classes and doing stuff. Then I had my female trainers would lift weights once, you know, once a day for an hour. And they just looked very different. And then I told you a story. I've told you a story before. I had a, I had a, a trainer <coughs> and a group X instructor both have a baby right at the same time. And it was cool because they come in pregnant, you know, do the whole thing. Obviously, the female trainer lifted. Group X instructor, just a bunch of cardio. The recovery from the pregnancy with the trainer was insanely fast. Like mm -hmm. she came back. So, and then the other, the, the group X instructor obviously did better than the average person. But I remember it took her a lot longer to come back. And what it was, it was, the, it was the muscle. Yep. It was the muscle. No, I, I was so misinformed as a trainer doing this. I mean, I remember I would put clients on a bike as hard as they could for seven minutes. Then I'd pick up the weights and do three exercises back <laughs> oh, together. God. Then I'd put them back on the bike yeah. and go as hard as they could for seven minutes. Yeah. And then I'd yeah. get them back. I mean, that was like Training cycles look like that. It was crazy. That's how I was training my clients, all in this pursuit of burning calories like yeah. crazy. And I'm doing weights, right? So we're going to build, like, so terrible. But I see this all over Instagram still. I mean, it's yeah. still prevalent in our space. People that have massive followings showing these exercises where they're doing dumbbell lunge to curl to press and then doing jump rope in between or burpees in yeah. between. It's like, what are you doing? It's like, there's, so, and the irony is that the better, more effective way is actually less work. <laughs> that's the irony of it. Maybe that's what makes it so hard to believe. It, yeah. it is. Maybe that's actually the weakness. It is because everything else in life. It's got to be harder than that. Everything else in life, the more you put in, the harder the work, the better the return is. Typically, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I mean, name something else like that's not like that. Yeah. I mean, if you 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 work harder at school, you get better grades. You study more for the test, you do better on the test. You you know, you practice a skill in a sport as much as you possibly can. You get better at. The, I mean, there's very few things where you're like, listen, it's actually like a sweet spot. You don't want to overdo this. You want to do just enough, and you're going to get more yeah. results. And you can technically do yeah. too much. I guess chemistry. And, yeah. 
<laughs> a little too I much. Mean, you I mean, yeah. I can't think of another really good example. Well, you know what it reminds me of, Adam, is, uh, um, you know, we, after I trained people for a while and I trained these really, <coughs> really wealthy, successful people, and um, it, they would be like, you, you know, I remember one guy I trained, he's like, you could try making a lot of money per hour and work a lot of hours. He goes, you're not going to get wealthy like that. Very few people are wealthy making money, m- making a lot per hour. He goes, the way you get wealthy is you take that money and you put it somewhere and it makes money for you. That's how you get wealthy. And I remember him making that big point. And he, I remember he showed me on a, on his, he had a, uh, uh, we had a calculator and he I did the math. He's like, okay, fine. You make this much per hour. Look how many hours you can work. What do you work more hours? Yeah. Or I could take that money and he would show me compounding interest and stuff. Mm-hmm. This is when I was young and it, Kind of understood it, and some of it went over my head. I mean, that's a good example because I, I mean that or that resonates with me because I remember being fixated on types of professions that would pay me more per hour yeah. or had a big salary, and uh-huh. like, oh, I got to get there. I got to get to the point where I'm making a hundred, two hundred, three hundred thousand. I was so focused on that, and then I remember reading the book Millionaire Next Door and seeing the things that most millionaires had in common was not their profession. Yeah. And in fact, things like teachers and engineers and these professions that aren't making millions of dollars a year were actually the most amount of millionaires. So it had nothing to do with their salary yeah. every year. It was that they had the the, the ability to live well below their means, yep. use their extra income to invest it in things that had compounding interest and then made money while they slept. Yeah. And they just did that for years over years over years that turned into decades and that all grew and grew and grew to the point where their passive income surpassed their income. Building muscle is your compounding interest. Yeah. hundred percent. It does the work for you when you have some more muscle. And the beauty is you just got to get, send the signal, feed the body properly. And then the body does the work for you. It's actually what happens. Your body builds the muscle for you. You don't have to sit there and build it. Yeah. You just send the signal. And then when the muscle's there, it's like having money in a, oh, yeah. a got wonderful- all the flexibility at your disposal. Yeah, you got compounding answers. You just, you know, it's like- it's like, yeah, imagine you have this amazing account. You wake up in the morning, pull it up, and like, oh, I made another five grand just yeah. going to sleep. That's what happens when you have more muscle. You literally you just, oh, I woke up. I burned more calories than I did last week because I got a little bit more muscle. Oh, my insulin sensitivity is better because I built a little more muscle. I mean, it's, it's pretty awesome. So this yeah. is a little a bit off the subject, but I wanted to talk to you guys because it came up in my feed today, and I don't think I've actually seen somebody do this before. Now, we've talked about uh, grounding right? And the the benefits of it. And I think we communicate it different than I've seen some people communicate it. Right. And I, I love this topic and I, and I, I like, and here, my less uh, woo woo wave looking at it. uh, Very much so love. Right. So, I mean, those that don't know it, you have more nerve endings in your feet than anywhere else. There's like over 7,000 in your feet, right? That's a lot of, I think your hands and your, I think your genitals have more, but your feet are up. I don't think so. I think the feet are the highest. Really? Yeah. Maybe in density, but anyway, they're up there. Right. Right. So, I mean, there's just a, a ton, right? So there's a, there is a lot going on neurologically, right, in that yeah. area. And yet we put these casts on our feet 90% of the time, right? Yeah. And we do it from birth. So, the, the, I mean, just common sense tells me that that's probably not the most ideal thing or the natural or the best way for the, all those nerves to get stimulated. And so I can see the benefits of taking my shoes off, walking around. Wow, you're right. There's even, even density. Oh, there like are more nerve endings I like per square you say centimeter. That. Say that again. I don't think Doug heard you. Density. No, no, no. His. No, the oh, right oh, part. He's right. going to put yeah. it on his ringtone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you're right. Oh, you're ah, right. Finally. Right. Let's Sal call uh, me again. No. So, I mean, my point though, right, is obviously that, I mean, common sense tells me that there's going to be tremendous value in connecting and moving and doing that. And it's just hard to do that in these big casty shoes that we have. So, but- the, then there's the woo-woo side that likes to talk about the energy that is yeah. that is traveling. Where they show the electron transfer. Yes, and I, so I saw somebody do this. I'd never seen this before until literally today. It came in my feed. And I've heard people say this stuff, but I actually never see someone like you try and use like mm-hmm. uh, the measuring of this. So if you have your shoes on and you grab one of those, uh, you know, electric, whatever, I forget what they're called, the things that measure the electricity passing from negative to positive, those, mm-hmm. the red and the black wires mm-hmm. or whatever, mm-hmm. you can put, you put one in the ground and then you hold one on your fingertips and then you have shoes on and you get like 1.2 reading or something like yeah. that. You get off your shoes and you step on the ground. All of a sudden it goes to 50. Yeah. So it like, you know, 50 X mm-hmm. of the electricity is traveling Doug, look through up your the body. Theory of you, so well, you're, you're more right. conductive for sure. I mean, and, yeah, what they're doing is this is what so this is what's annoying is that sometimes what we do is we notice the benefit of something, yeah. and then we try to find the most we, scientific we way exaggerated. To yeah, the most yeah. weird, like you know, <laughs> crazy. I mean, I don't think it's I don't think it's the most weird. So I think I think they people try 
I think we're all guilty of this. I think uh, even Eastern Yeah, but the answer the answer's simple is what I'm trying to say. It's not as complicated and as, you know, like, oh, the I mean, maybe transfer. it is. Maybe it is. Like, I, 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 I know where you're going. Like, sometimes the simplest answer is the is the correct answer. But we also, there's so many unknowns. Like, yeah. we, we act like we know everything about the brain and the metabolism, and we know well, hardly anything about those things. But we well, act as if we know everything. It's yeah. like... It's somewhere in that vein, there, there was like this man-made, well, all the pyramids are man-made but there was like a recent one that was made uh that was really tall i believe it was in russia um but planes would fly over it and they would measure the energy like emitted and it was substantially high and so as you walk in too they do the same thing where they like measure the uh the electronic like frequency and it yeah. was like through the roof yeah. so it, there's a weird thing of like conductivity there, for sure but like yes uh, it, there, there's definitely it, something people there. exaggerate it all the time i agree there's something there because it's been there forever yeah. and if something's there forever then there's going to be a co-evolution relationship just sure a period end of story okay so but here's why i don't like this adam because so here what they do is they say that and doug brought it up being barefoot can help your body absorb earth's electrons and then that's what offers health benefits okay so then what happens is these biohackers or these you know, hucksters yeah. online who want to sell stuff, yeah. sell you a grounding mat. Yeah. So yeah. now instead of going outside and yeah. walking barefoot on the grass, yeah, yeah. put your feet on this mat that's going to do this electron transfer. Do they have like a reflective mirror when they butthole sun? Is that? <laughs> no, that's, oh God, that, that was the worst one. That's a new one to that, sell. That's the worst okay. one. But it's like, oh, oh, cool. You don't need to go outside and put your feet in the dirt because it's dirty. Just put your feet on this grounding mat and you'll mm. get the same benefits. No, you're not. It's what we, it's what you said, Adam, like if you don't think, first of all, a, a large percentage of your brain is dedicated to connecting to your body. Yeah. Okay. Neurologically. It, just period. If something's underdeveloped, it's, it's, that means your, your neurodevelopment is underdeveloped. If you're always in shoes and socks all the time, all the time, all the time, imagine if you wore gloves as often as you work. Well, through. anybody who's had a cast knows this. Yeah. If you've yeah. ever had a cast on your arm or any, even in like a sling for a long period of time, and then you take it out. Oh, yeah. That Or even like an example would be your arm falling asleep because you left it in a position. Like that, that what that is, is like your your body has stopped sending this this connection yeah. over there. And then the, yeah, that like period of time to get- it off. Yeah, it stops. It, if it, you don't use it, you lose it, right? Yeah. So if you- put your feet in a cast like that, your your brain goes, it reprioritizes that energy somewhere else. It's like, yeah. oh, we're not really going to need all these all this energy going down to these 7,000 nerves. We'll send it to other places of the body. Like to think that that's not healthy and beneficial to re-engage that and get them working and get them firing is just common sense in my opinion. How many people would yeah. survive today if they had to go barefoot and walk around in the woods or in nature? <laughs> yeah. right? Nobody. Yeah. I, I would be destroyed. Oh, dude. I would be destroyed. A lot so that's of people yelling. Ah, wah, wah. So that's a big part yeah. of the brain that's uh, that's not developed. And it's, it's crazy how backwards we are culturally at that minute. I remember the abuse I had took from my family over not letting my son wear shoes. I know. Oh, so my afraid. God. I know. Everybody just and still to this day, like he'll. He, I love that I did it so consistently with him, and that he loves to take his shoes off. Like I don't mm -hmm. give a shit where we're at. He wants to take his shoes off. He's. I, I always say, to him, Hey, anytime. You want to take your shoes off? Daddy says it's yeah. okay. And you can tell someone that. Except they, for the bathroom at the gas station. <laughs> Don't do it there, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, I hold him when we do those. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I just, I, I love that he wants to do that. And I love that it doesn't bother him to walk over gravel. And to, yeah. it doesn't at, at all because he's been trained that way his whole life. And I can see how stable he is. Well, this is how interesting it yeah. is, right? Because it's all, you, you, your body is an extension and it's the essence of your brain, right? And it's like, um, you guys have read about phantom limb syndrome, how mm -hmm. weird that is. Mm -hmm. Somebody will lose a limb, but because their brain, for whatever reason, perceives the limb to still be there, the person will feel yeah. like they have an arm. So the arm is gone, but they feel like they and have an arm. real pain. And it's, and it's in like pain. Like localized there. And there's yeah. nothing they can do about it. Pain medicine doesn't work. It's nothing brutal. works. And then a scientist years ago figured out uh, a mirror box uh, tricks the brain into So what they'll do is they'll put their stump or whatever in the mirror box, look at their opposite arm, and then and visualize that it's their arm. And then they can they can almost confuse their brain into thinking it's extending and relaxing the arm, and the pain will go away. Mm -hmm. But I mean, how trippy, right? So here you are. Again, I'll use this example. Imagine if you wore gloves as much as you wore shoes for as long as you wore shoes. So since you were, could walk, right? So imagine if since you could walk... 90% of the time you had gloves on. How much less versatile and nimble 
and accurate would yeah. your hands be? They'd just be more like blunt objects, right? You wouldn't be <laughs> imagine have as much manipulating dexterity. things and touching things. How weird it would feel oh, on your hands and like over sl- like slapping everything, overstimulation or understimulation, or you just you did just you guys. Of- did you guys see the video I sent you guys in the thread of the girl who was drawing with all four? I did see that. I it was it's so mind blowing. Like I wanted to like search this. Like Bro, not nice like pictures. That, like beautiful portraits of All famous people. Time. Bro, go to the go to our group thread. Yeah. It's in there. I sent it to our group thread a like long time like ago. Uh, it was just like last week I sent yeah. it, so it'll be a ways. I mean, back. I've seen I've seen somebody that was really artistic. She did both arms at no, the same time. No, she's bro. Feet. She is sitting with like this. Feet too? There's yeah, three there's three pieces of paper on in front of her. There's three or four pieces of under on and she's on a clear desk and she's drawing with her feet and both her hands. At the same time, and it, it, how it, does her brain even work like she's that? She's trained it that way. Yeah, I mean, I mean it, 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 ha- it has to be one of the craziest Crazy. things I have ever seen. And, it, and I was like, "Is there a way this is CGI or fake?" Because that's that has to be one of the, one of the most crazy, yeah. talented things anybody it's could so, possibly it's do. So be- it's so interesting to me. In fact, the human body is so fascinating because there's just <laughs> it's, it's we think of developing. We're just talking right now about building muscle and building the body, but what we don't realize is you're building central nervous system uh, just as much, if not more. All oh, yeah. the skills you learn, all the, the ways you can move, yeah. that's your CNS. And your CNS will adapt just like your body. So if you lose contractile tissue, if you lose the ability, you know, if you stop testing your, your nerves and how they, they perceive things, if you stop allowing your body to be in cold or hot temperatures, Sending it to you if now, you stop, it, then what happens is that your brain's connection to those things also reduces. It starts to adapt. It starts to prune those things off. Just like you'll lose muscle if you don't. If you don't move or don't exercise, bro, it is real. I just sent it to you, Doug, right now to our group thread and put it up so Justin can see it on the on this video. It's, it's pretty wild. It's it not. is. This is crazy wild. It's crazy what people are are, are capable of. I, I don't know if I'm just like the only one who's like so no, I baffled it. by this. Uh, like I thought it was totally uh, geek out on stuff like this, like superhuman ability. I mean, and it's not like she like I would be impressed if she drew circles. You know, to, yeah, to, just to, be able to do yeah, it. Yeah, just to make four <laughs> circles look. She draws. Like beautiful portraits. Well, it's like she's not even looking at one in particular. Or like you seen this before, Doug? I did. I did see it. I think it was somebody else I saw, but I haven't seen this particular one now. Yeah, this is the one I sent you. Yeah, yeah look at this. Yeah. What? Look at this. Yeah, she's doing eight. She's doing oh eight. By the way, it's not like just a stupid little cartoon picture. Like it's no like, the YouTube channel. The like YouTube portraits. people will get to see this. Those are unbelievable portraits. Yeah, it's crazy that Dude. she draws. Who, how many people can do this? She's got to be like one of the only ones. Is ever. that not? I, I didn't realize there was eight. This She's is doing like eight. Hey, at once. Hey, if, of course, it's a, it's a woman. There's no way a dude can <laughs> multitask like this. <laughs> no uh, way. Yeah. Dude. It's you know possible. Yeah. You ever watch your wife do? We're, get, we're getting like Look two at things. Look at that. I, I mean, and they're really, really good wow. portraits. Elvis, Shady, Marilyn Monroe. Hey. I don't know who the other two Einstein. guys Einstein. Einstein. That's that's that one dude that, that does those one funny Instagram videos. guy. Yeah, look how good those are. I know who he he mocks. He's just like, hmm? yeah. yeah, isn't that isn't that wild? Yeah, yeah. I don't know how that that thing. I think that one video doesn't even have that many views. I think someone got like thousands of views. I thought for sure that she's thing. like yeah, washing fifty six hundred views. So it's like yeah. cooking dinner with his foot. And like, yeah. 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 Cool, huh? Yeah, I mean, just over here. I mean, but really, and me obviously, grapes, the point of bringing that up just no. highlights the ability that your feet have. Potential, I mean, right? Yeah, yeah, I mean that. If you, to, to, to be I able know. to do that is, yeah. I mean, the dexterity that you need, the control, the mind, ever that. I mean, that's and then it's, it's, and you know what's even crazier about this. This is what's sad is that we're so. What if used, she had a tail too. You we're, know? <laughs> we're so <laughs> really <laughs> maximized. <but. laughs> Justin's what <laughs> tail? I'm just saying, 12, man. Brother. That's twelve. It. You guys stop. Uh, you guys stop watching. Mouth and everything. You guys stop like, watching like, weird shit, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just. It's, I'm, Imagine what she could do with that tail. It's so unbelievable. Just, it wouldn't, you know, be a far fetch for me. Uh, that's God. all. I'm saying. I know. I know. It's, uh, Somebody better have swooped her up, right? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Like, she's <laughs> hey, honey, talented. Yeah, yeah. You want to? You want to? You want to go? I'm my busy right now, honey. I'm doing something. Well. <laughs> You got oh, your feet. Yeah. Hey, those you know of us, that, hey, those yeah. the, the listeners that are hardcore have been listening for a long time. Remember the story I told a long time. Oh, remember the story on, I told dude. a long time. I gotta bring that shit up no more. That's like that's old. <laughs> you gotta go no. back in time. It's, it's a nugget for somebody who's, who who listened for a long don't, time. <laughs> don't point people backwards. Please don't do that. Anyway, <laughs> super. Yeah, impressive. Well, well, if you now that we're talking about cool. weird stuff, did you know that there's a like a uh, what what would you, what would alternative medicine? There's an alternative medicine practice 
called urotherapy. Have you heard of this? Urotherapy? Yeah, Euro? U-R-O oh, therapy. Like Uranus? I was no. thinking like they only did it in Europe. No, no, mm. no. It's, uh, I'm going I'm to read this to you guys because it's, uh. You wrote like, like, like a urologist. Let like, me just read like this. Euro- hole? In 1945. Yeah, hole no, no, hold on. Yeah. In 1945, John W. Armstrong, a British naturopath, published a popular book about the alleged curative power of drinking one's own urine. Okay. Oh. The yeah. book, The Water of Life, <laughs> a treatise on urine therapy, claims that urine the can cure fountain. all major illnesses. Now here's what's here's why I brought this up. Okay, I'm on Instagram and we're I'm looking for or Facebook. I think it was looking for topics to bring. We, up. we know what groups you're you're following. <laughs> <That's laughs> I know what just happened. It's clear no, indicator no. what you follow. <laughs> I'm, trying, I'm trying to make the case. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so listen, to me guys. Yeah, yeah. So listen, guys. You guys want to do it? So I stumbled across yeah, yeah, drinking anyway, just totally randomly. Yeah, yeah listen, you know, a lot of health benefits. You guys know I always bring breakthrough stuff to the podcast. <laughs> no, no, no. I was on Facebook and there was a, a podcast. It was like a health podcast, and they're interviewing a guy who is apparently an expert on this, and he was talking about how amazing he is for his health. I'm like, there's no way. There's no way. So I Googled it, and there's groups of people that do it. Not only do it, but claim that it's like it's like cleared their skin up. What? And it's so yeah, dude. Yeah, but it's terrible for their breath. I don't. I, this is. I didn't even know this existed. So I I saw. I remember. Uh, I, you know what? Even if there are benefits, what was Come Bear Grylls' like show? Come on, what was Bear Grylls' show? Ways Man versus Wild. Was that Bear oh, yeah. Grylls? Yeah. Bear Grylls did the yeah. all, those, all those memes. Better drink. He's always piece. drinking piss. Yeah, he, like, yeah, yeah. I mean, that, he shows that as like when you if you were out of water in the desert, clothes the and next thing you do is you, you pee, you yeah. pee and drink, because at least to hydrate yourself a little bit, like that would be. Well, there is that. The only time I think I would potentially do that. Right. Yeah. There is that. Is it true that if you get stung by a jellyfish and you pee on it that that's what you need to do I or believe. is it just water no i think I that's, that's true i think that is true I but what is it about the pee then some i don't know if it's an ammonia ammonia thing or something in so your pee that, that helps to kind of counter the ph somehow okay so pee is a real like that it's a real thing then y- yeah but but again that's one of those things like did somebody just pee on somebody and figure that out. Like, so, Sal, what what's the what is the science to support? There is no science. There is no, no. science. Come on, no. There's got to be something to get a whole group of people to do. No, it. there's no there's no science, dude. Uh, you know, and I okay, there's this literally is no very science. closely related to like breathitarians and like fruititarians, and like flat earthers. Just oh. like really bizarre like okay, groups of go. people. Unfortunately, in the real world, treating a jellyfish sting by urinating on it may actually cause someone in what Monica's situation even more pain rather than relief. Urine can actually aggravate the jellyfish's stingers to release more <laughs> venom. This cure is indeed fiction. Yeah, what? I've also heard about yeah. uh, debunked. Uh, your wife's gonna be pissed. You've been pissing on her. Dang, for the time. Time. <laughs> it's not working. Just, it's like uh, trust me, honey. Give me trust some me. more water. <laughs> <laughs> How did I get stung by a jellyfish yeah. at home? <laughs> yeah. We're not even. Where the, the ocean. hell did that come from then? <laughs> Like, who started that? Uh, That's what I'm saying. I try, I try to convince Katrina that not to so... get stung by a bee. Trust me, this will work. It works with <laughs> jellyfish. <laughs> oh, God. What's that? There's also- Check I, that out on DuckDuckGo. I don't trust Google. There's, I know. You know yeah. what? These are the, the, the elites don't want us to they know. Don't, the they don't want us to know <laughs> that we can- They don't want us to cure our, our everything. Our there was things. there was also I also heard this is an old uh like this might even be maybe you guys heard it because especially you, Jesse, because you play football, that if you have athlete's foot peeing on it, it was supposed to help. Did you ever hear that? I mean, I mean, you, no. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't heard that one. Who sold you that one? I, I heard uh, that. Uh, God, what did I hear that? A yeah, long that time sounds ago. like one of your buddies pulled a prank on you. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Oh, I know how to fix this, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, still. Hey, I just put that cream on it, man. Yeah. Oh, you got a shower? Me too. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, <laughs> looks like you got some. A oh, that's clothes. the worst because, I mean, they would do laundry for us. And so you put like. You know your undergarments, everything like For all football? this one clip, and and then everybody wash it together. Like everybody got like athlete's foot, jock itch, oh, like, oh. and I was like, I'm never doing laundry with all you guys ever again. <coughs> Disgusting, so bad. Yeah, yeah, when you when you shower in public showers or gym, you got to wear sandals. You always, yeah, dude, you got to. Yeah. yeah, you know what else I learned too? I had a doctor tell me this. I was talking. I had a doctor client, and I was, you know, we were laughing, and I said, "Why is it that you know old guys in the locker room always put everything on?" Before their underwear, like put the socks on, whatever. And he looks at me very seriously. He goes, always put your socks on before your underwear. I said, why? He goes, if you're in the locker room and you pick up any fungus on your feet, 
and then you put on your underwear, then it'll get on your underwear, and then you could get an infection on your like jock itch or whatever. Wow. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So you say, old oh, guys knew what they were doing. doing. Old wisdom right there. It's, I swear, bro. I'm not going to question old guys anymore. Ever. I feel again. like they know everything. So we got to use the hair dryer for the balls. There's got to be some science behind that, too. I mean, there has to be. <laughs> I'm just going to follow suit. I don't know what I it is, is, but starting I think, Tuesday. <laughs> I think this just feels good. <laughs> so, by the way, uh, so urine does not help with jellyfish, even on DuckDuckGo. Okay. okay. Right. But athlete's foot, yes. What? Because urine uh, contains urea, <gasps> which is good for fungus. Oh. Well, there you go, fuckers. Wow, look Making at that. So you can pee shit. on athletes. Look at that. I got you back. One more. I got you back. <laughs> okay. Boom. Interesting. I, I just learned something today, you guys. Yeah, I, I didn't know, know that. Yeah. It's, it's, he's full of wisdom. I had athletes really when I was younger, too. I wish I would have pissed on it. You only had it once? Yeah. I only got it one time. Really? Mm -hmm. I used to get it all the time. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. well, oh, you I know why? I was with a bunch of dirty basketballs. Really? I don't want to say that again. I... Don't you wear cleats? What's wrong with you? <laughs> You're in the locker room, do? dude. Like, like, what are you going to do? Yeah. Right, I think mine, mine came <laughs> from like playing basketball and staying in those socks like all day in the in the. Shoes. You have to have the fungus though. Yeah, I, I would just change it once I got to the point where I, I changed. I think mine was sandals is the move. I think sure. I got a lot of mine because I did uh, judo a lot as a kid. And so you're barefoot on the mats. Mm. You're constantly barefoot, barefoot training because you don't wear shoes in, in judo. So that might have been. Right. Yeah. So I don't well, know. you get like staff's a real problem with that oh. too, right? Like, yeah. Bro. If you get that in any kind of open cut or something, dude. I knew is it, it is it ringworm scary. popular too with like jujitsu? I mean, it's wrestling? not popular. Nobody likes it. But no, I mean, <laughs> like, not like popular like that. Like it's common. I should right. say. Yeah. Oh, look, yeah. he's here. Yeah. Ringworm. <laughs> come on in. No, everybody. No, that's common. Yeah, but yeah. it's another fungal infection. You just put some. Yeah. Could you pee on that too? My, um, I mean, I guess you could. It sounds like anything has any uh, any. Try it. Wow. Not gonna stop. Yeah, what about you know, my psoriasis? Like that, isn't psoriasis a type of fungus? Could too? be. I think it is. No, I have yet to try him. He's know. trying to get us to pee on him again. <laughs> Not again. I'll ask, I'll ask my wife before you guys. <laughs> oh, <water. gross. laughs> it's disgusting. No, it's uh, 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 anyway, let's change the subject. <laughs> he's, he's, he's doing the skin. He's Caldera like, hey, guys, commercial today. Yeah. How about yeah. that? Hey, it's a great transition. Wow. I got to ask you, you're doing the beard oil. Yeah, yeah. What do you think of it? I like it. I really do like it. What I don't know is I don't know how different it is from the serum. They feel close. They almost, they, they're not quite the same. I haven't put my finger on exactly what is Maybe different. Maybe look up Yeah, the, I looked them up. Uh, for example, the good serum has very different ingredients Oh, it does, okay. So is probably it, is more it good things for are helpful for beards. my skin. That's I'm sure I mean, the beard is basically just for healthy, shiny beard. And yeah. then the, the one that was skin probably has stuff that is supposed to be beneficial for my skin. Well, I believe course. the beard oil, since it does get on your skin, is also designed to help the skin, help the skin as yeah, well. Yeah, I figured it would be okay for it. Obviously, it'd be silly. If so they, you notice the difference when you put it on your beard? Yeah, it's shinier. And it keeps it like, so I get like the kind of the wild stuff, uh, you yeah, know, the, especially the when we The wizard hairs are just Yeah, we missed like, we didn't see Vicky. She was sick. That week, one so. fitness influencer friend we have with his beard, it's all <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, the owl. Shave it off, buddy. Yeah, just, just stop. You got pubes dude. on your face. It doesn't look good. Yeah. So, uh, according to this, the beard oil is uh, formulated to help the skin. So, most beard oils are designed to just the beard. Treat the beard oh. only. And this is, you know, uh, itchiness, dry skin, things like that. That's what it's can designed I, to combat. Can I tell you guys? Oh, it is help with itchiness and dry uh -huh. skin too. Yes. So I, so I just because the beard itch wasn't because I was told or I read anything, but it feels good on my psoriasis. So I've always because I have I have that on my on my side oh. on top of my head. So whenever I put on a beard, I always rub it. In By the way, huh. are you noticing an improvement since starting since you started vitamin taking D. vitamin D? Yeah. God damn it, yeah, yeah. Adam. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We've only been talking I, I about did, it for how many years now? I, I did, he he. No, you know what happened? Yeah. But yeah. No, so he so here's what happened i'll tell everybody what happened yeah, I called he eliminated yeah he called me he eliminated uh his food intolerances which is supposed to help autoimmune issues and his autoimmune issues were getting worse and worse and worse couldn't figure out what was going on so he sent me a text he's like what the f he was all pissed off and i'm like are you still taking vitamin d no oh shit mm. dude so and he did and now you notice right away yeah yeah yeah, <sighs> yeah. you know what it is bro is that because of your hispanic background uh, like i'm dark-skinned too we, we unless we're in the sun all day, I know. we're going to be low on vitamin D. I mean, I think that I've told you that before that I speculated on, and that's actually when I noticed psoriasis happened. It wasn't until I transitioned in my mid twenties, and, and that actually was about four yep. or five years of working under fluorescent lights all day long. I was all through childhood, even in high school and junior college, 
I was like an outdoor. I worked out. I worked on a farm constantly. I was yeah. always outside yep. wakeboarding, snow. Yep. I lived on a lake. Like yep. I mean, I was dark, dark all the time. And then all of a sudden, I get into a profession where I'm in. That's a, dude. My dad. My mm -hmm. dad got his. My dad was. He's getting. He. You know. He's already got arthritis throughout his whole body. So he thought it was just progressing. He was getting all these aches and pains and low energy and all that stuff. Now my dad's always outside. He's outside. You know, but I've shown you guys videos in my parents' backyard. It's, he looks like a, it's a, it's a garden. Oh, yeah, right? He's out man. there constantly. He's always doing things outside. Gets lots of sun. He did not think his vitamin D was an issue. Anyway, he couldn't figure out what was going on. Doctor's like, let's just test it. See, it's low. Yeah. And it's because, especially if you have dark skin, you don't convert vitamin D from the sun very well. Your body, our bodies, basically came from. We need People a higher, live, higher volume of it, right? Lots Compared of to it. someone like Justin who just, just needs a Justin little bit. Justin and Doug walk by the window and they got vitamin D for a month. Yeah. You and I. We I know. I think, I think. Well, I mean, I remember when, when the first time I tested, I was taking vitamin. I was taking 5,000 5, IUs a day and I still was, I was still really low. Yeah. So, so I, are you going I, 10 right now? Yeah, I take 10,000. Yeah. So, and I, it you know, only took three days for me to notice a difference. Wow. It was, my psoriasis was getting so, how frustrating is this for me, right? The whole reason why I'm even doing the protocol for the diet so is primarily for the for psoriasis. For you to call me at night. Oh, I was it. so, plus it's not like I don't go try to do my own digging myself first, right? Yeah. So it's not like I just default, like, oh, tell us if Dr. Sal can tell me. I'm like, I've tried to like figure it out, yeah. troubleshooting all the things, ma manipulating all the controls. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? Oh, like, yeah. I'm I'm tighter on my diet than what I was before. I've eliminated this dairy completely. I found any of the little places where I thought I didn't realize I had. And so that was all done. And I'm like, and my psoriasis is the worst it's ever yeah. been. And then I'm like, and of course, I'm not on my vitamin D. Um, you uh, Other thing, I this morning you did uh, thymosin alpha for yeah. immune system for your cold. Yeah. Are you noticing anything yet? It's hard to say because you also gave me the Sudafed. Okay. Your right. Sudafed helps. I want to see how you feel tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, I'll tell you. I'll, because I'll, I had a mild cold last uh, last week, and then I got the thymus and alpha, and I did a bolus of it, so like I gave you, and um, a significant difference the next day. Yeah, I'll report back tomorrow. Okay. I mean, I I, I mean, it's hard to say right now because I, I feel better than I did when I first got here, for yeah. sure, but it's hard to say if that's right. from the suit. Hey, I got to bring one other thing up. Did you see the UFC's new partnership? Did you see it? Oh, yeah. No. Bud Light. Bud Light. Bud Light, one of the biggest contracts they've had, right? Interesting. Hey, right? That's, that's, that's a Bud smart Light's, move. That's, of Bold course. Move. That that's, is a smart move. That is Bud Light trying to counter-correct. They are yeah. hard trying to steer in the other direction. Like, how do we get back these people that we lost? Yeah. Let's go sign a contract with Mixed Martial Arts Organization. You do you think it's going to work? I don't know. That's an interesting. That's yeah. interesting. It might. I kind of I kind of hope it does for them. I don't know. Just like, it, depending <coughs> on, I mean, I I don't know, dude. Like you make a mistake and and you come back and you, hey, you recognize your mistake it. and you just try to do your best. To, it's all about the consumer. It, as it, long as they're trying to yeah. actively um, win their 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 uh, customer base back, I think you know. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm rooting that, for that's them. admirable. I'm rooting for them. Yeah, you know, I don't, I, that's that's a good that's a good question, right? So, like, people you know, are gonna, one, one of the things that. Uh, probably one of the things that I think that people c uh, comment about. Um, us and our business and the way we operate is the authenticity of it. Yeah. yeah. Staying true to ourselves. Right. Right. There's plenty of things that we could do to uh, make more money or try to appeal to a demographic of our customers or like we just have agreed that we would stay true from the very beginning. The things that yeah. fulfill us, the things that we would like to do, yeah, our beliefs, our values. Like, yeah. and if we don't get paid more because of it, then so hey, be hey it. so be it. We'll yeah. find another it's way to make money. Soul, it's not right. worth it. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when a company makes a really bad mistake that way, pandering, I'm not a big fan. Yeah, and yeah. just because they go back, that just should, to me, that just shows how it like it's it means nothing. It was, to it them. was deliberate, yeah. but right? And, if, and it's not endearing. It's not but like. That, but that's if you think it, it always it, it, it always meant something. It didn't mean anything anyway. Like these companies, yeah, are you're so right. Big, yeah, they're just gonna follow the consumer. I mean, look, you you see these 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 companies and how they virtue signal you ever seen the ads yeah but even more you ever seen the ads by the way during uh pride month on like car companies and then watch their ads in the middle east very different i know it's that's yeah so it's they're, they're they, yes they're just it's trying to attract yeah but you know what consumer. yeah but we this has only happened in the last in our lifetime right or even the last like say 20 years that big companies are 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 outward speaking about politics that used to be a thing that you just stay away from yeah, sure. like why would you alienate a percentage of your of your audience 
Yeah. That's kind of stupid. Well, it's it's not sports, smart. Too. It's not. Yeah. It's, yeah. Same thing. Sports has done the same thing. I'm just yeah. not a fan of that. Like I what? I, I wasn't really a Michael Jordan fan me. growing yeah. up. Like I, I was. I was. I was not. I was more of a Magic Johnson fan, right? So I wasn't a Michael Jordan fan. Growing up. But one of my th one of the things I loved about Michael Jordan was that everybody wanted his opinion on where he's and he always stayed out of po politics yeah, yep. like basketball is my game but that's where that's where i spend all of my time in like and he would just avoid getting involved in that like i just he's appreciate smart, yeah. and i appreciate that it's like we everybody watches him not for that and i can't stand how someone like lebron james and then and this movement now of like oh you have this platform therefore you should have to say something about something like yeah. no you shouldn't if you're not really educated on it yeah. and it's not something you do you're very passionate about then stay the fuck out of it why should you go in that direction i'm just not a fan of that and yeah, i if feel you like have a, if you companies have an, the same way if you have an opinion you're passionate that's fine but it's yeah. it's obviously fake you know half the time but i mean these are companies they're big companies yeah. bud light you know anheuser-busch they employ a lot of people and i think yeah. this look i it's the it's the these it's the message is being sent and that consumers are saying, we don't want this. We want this. You went too far. You're not going far enough, whatever. And the market will fall. And that's what the market does. Whenever people get mad at the market, whenever people get mad at companies or products or media, you have to realize one thing. You're looking in the mirror. Mm -hmm. It's reflecting the consumer. So as mad as you get, when I go to the grocery store and I see a bunch of crap advertised to my kids to eat, and I'm in the health and fitness space, I'm not buying it, but a lot of people are. So it's like, this is just reflecting yeah. the consumer. If the consumer stopped buying this stuff, it wouldn't exist. Well, that's so, why I think it, it shows it worked, right? Yes. The, the consumer response worked. That's right. And and I think that's always a good thing to recognize is that we vote best through our dollars and yeah. you know everything that's going on in the world and politics. We really have no control over most of that, but what we do have control of is like our purchasing. Habits. Well, that's 100%. the part I think I'm, I'm most happy about is less about Bud Light and more about the consumer who actually did discipline themselves yeah, not to go right. put their dollars there. Even if yep. maybe you love the way Bud Light tasted, you said, hey, I'm not a fan of them taking a stand or, or getting political. Therefore, even though I enjoy Bud Light, I, I mean, I did the same thing with the NBA. I didn't watch the NBA for a year. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that was hard for me to do. You guys know how much I love basketball. Yeah. I love yeah. basketball. I watch preseason. That's how much I love basketball. I watch every game the Boyers do. But That's when you I, got into pickleball, huh? Yeah. You started watching <laughs> but I mean, I did. I didn't like that they were getting so political. Dude, what two was fun. it? Two years or now three years ago it was, and so I I stopped watching. That was the only what that was the way I would protest. Right? Yeah. It's like okay, I'm not gonna. You're not gonna get my viewership, which will hopefully in, uh, affect viewership, mm -hmm. which will hopefully affect advertising dollars. And and I'm also not gonna get big stunt on the big, big Instagram Although, post and make a, like a bunch of anti shit. It's just like. I'm not, I'm going to vote with my dollar. That's all I'm going to do. Although mm -hmm. it is coming from the top down in some, uh, some ways, right? With the, what is it called? SEG and, you know, ESG, ESG, ESG sorry, yeah. ESG and other stuff. So, yeah, but I mean, consumer still has a power. So that's it. I got a, I got a shout out for everybody. Oh, let's hear it. This is a, you're not going to learn anything about health or fitness or anything like that. But if you like weird stuff, if you like learning about conspiracy oh, theories, oh, yeah. <laughs> scary oh, stuff. This is definitely what a page that Justin me? follows. Oh, I know I follow it. Oh, it's God. called Morbid Curiosity. It's on oh, yes. It's on Instagram. And it's got weird, scary shit. Some of it's true, some of it questionable, but it's all weird and a lot. Some it's of called it's called morbid what? Curiosity with a K, though they spell it. Morbid is it, curiosity. Is it on Instagram I or don't YouTube? Follow them and I, yes, you do. I'm going to I guarantee now. you've shared stuff on okay, them. What, what page? On Instagram? Instagram. Instagram. Okay. Yeah, check it out. Got it. Organifi is a company that makes supplements or organic that help you with well, wellness, health, and performance. They have a new product. In fact, uh, I love it. Uh, it's called Organifi's Shilajit Gummies. This has real Shilajit inside them, but they taste delicious. Lots of health benefits from boosting testosterone, balancing hormones, reducing inflammation, and helping with cognitive performance. They have lots of other products as well. Go check them out. Go to Organifi.com. That's O R. G A N I F I dot com forward slash mind pump, use the code mind pump and get 20% off. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Steve from the Netherlands. Steve, what's up, man? How can we help you? Hey, guys. Oh, my God. I can't believe it's you guys. Hey, hey. <laughs> what's happening? I've been listening you? to you. I've been listening to you guys like since we quad times, man. Like, wow. Uh, <laughs> the good old days. <laughs> and, uh, geez, it's, it's crazy to see you guys here. So, uh, yeah, obviously. Got to thank you guys. Going to keep that part short because I know your time is valuable, but like you guys have helped me through so many things uh, over the years and uh, also mentally now because this thing is about burnout. 
that I'm about to ask you. And I've been actually listening to you guys more for the fun of it than uh, <laughs> actually, uh, you know, like getting two words of workout. Um, and now it's time for me to, to get back into it. And that's kind of what uh, my questions are going to be about. So a uh, little, little background information for me. Um, so I've been lifting for about 12 years, um, shift, kind of shifting between hypertrophy and strength. Uh, obviously, the first three years were just screwing around with dumbbells and whatnot and just doing whatever, but getting uh, continuously better with, with the help of you guys as well. Um, in the meantime, the last three years, I've worked as a group instructor and a manager for a, um, for a gym that did reformer and boxing classes. So, yeah, obviously knowing that wasn't the most optimal way for people to kind of like get build muscle and stuff like that. It was still a great way for people to stay fit, including myself. Um, but uh, after that, yeah, um, I got uh, into a burnout, a really, really severe one. Uh, also, a little piece of side information. When, when I was 21, I uh, spontaneously contracted a hernia um, on the left side. So I walked with a limp for about a year or so. So from that came that my left side actually got weaker and remained weaker than my right side. Um, this is also just due to ignorance and not wanting to let go of my compound lifts and just kind of working through it. Um, but it's been also, uh, you know, it gave me some, um, what do you call it, injuries over time, uh, which I also have to really kind of consider now. Um, and... Yeah, and I've been dealing with like inflammation on the right shoulder and just in general, like my um, my right shoulder is just inflamed and it just doesn't feel right. Um, my left shoulder is a lot more mobile and my right shoulder is always super tight, uh, which I notice a lot during the bench press. Um, so yeah, that's kind of like the background information. Uh, and the question would be, first of all, considering the information that you guys have, and knowing that I've been burned out for about like, I'd, I'd say it's been about a year ago. So I've been slowly, gradually working my way to the gym again to just start, you know, to just kind of work out for a little bit. Um, but like, how do I go from here? What would your, yeah, what's your, what's your advice on that? Like, how do I, how do I get back into it? And not only back into it, but like better than ever, you know, working out those, that shoulder, working out that, yeah, the instability in my body and also the mental aspect of getting back into it. Yeah, we have to deal with the burnout first, so I need more details on that. When you say <laughs> burnout, what what are the signs and symptoms of that? Yeah, so um, well, it was it was severe in a way that the first three months for me were just kind of like um, uh, like um, like disassociated from life. Like it, I I was working through a burnout for already half a year. Um, like that's what my doctor told me, um, considering the symptoms that I had been having, which were like severe fatigue and that kind of stuff. So, but it happened in November. Uh, yeah, actually literally a year ago, that's when I, uh, called in sick. Uh, and, and that's when the, the burnout was really, uh, became a thing. And yeah, in that period of time, it was just, it was nearly impossible, uh, impossible for me to even get out of bed. You know, it was pretty crazy and I had to work through a lot of psychological stuff, which I have been doing. So I feel I feel a million times better than I uh, did at that point. Um, the, the biggest I think the biggest challenge for me right now is my physical shape, because, yeah, you know, like for a year to not have properly worked out, to have been very sedentary, to, you know, like have gone also through a lot of mental stress, which is obviously also causing a lot of damage to the body or, you know, needs more recovery. So I just noticed like I'm, I'm super out of shape, which is really kind of messing with how I used to think and how I used to be. And this is kind of why I'm at a, at a loss because I, I feel like I want to just kind of jump right back into it. But I also kind of feel like that's not the way to go. Yeah, no, I, um, I wouldn't do that. But, but what contributes, because what you're <coughs> It sounds what like you're depression. Saying, yeah, it sounded yeah. like you got into mm -hmm. some pretty deep uh, depression, maybe some anxiety. 
Um, what what contributed to that? So I'm going to guess you just worked out a lot, maybe didn't get good sleep. But there were there other life stressors happening at the time. Like what 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 were the factors that you've identified that contributed to the shutdown of your body? Right. Okay. Yeah. So 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 that would be um, just like overworking like crazy which which originated really now I, now that i've gone through a lot of like uh, therapy and stuff like that originated from my youth which kind of you know like without going too deeply into detail about that um but it really turned me into this crazy people pleaser with without any boundaries or limits okay. uh, also towards myself you know so i'm also the type of uh, a person that tends to overtrain like, and then really to up to a point where I'm, where my body just kind of like gets super inflamed or uh, super injured just because I wanted to squeeze out that last rep or do that extra set. Um, obviously knowing now, especially this year, listening to your podcast and hearing you guys saying over and over and over again, like more is not better. More is usually worse, you know, hit the sweet spot, do what's right for you. Um, and I found that this is the ultimate time, like the perfect time to actually start listening to that advice and, and do it right from here on, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, that's excellent. Um, I'm glad you're here. Uh, so there's a there's an order of operation um, in this particular situation. And the first, the, the, the first thing that needs to be addressed is your mental health, okay? So, because if you don't, if, if that doesn't get addressed, by the way, exercise, diet, sleep, lifestyle, um, addresses if done right is so effective to improve your mental health. Um, if you don't address that, then going after muscle gain and fat loss and performance, uh, it's not going to work. You just, you're either going to burn out again, or you're just going to be stuck in the same place and, and find yourself very frustrated. Now here's the, the, the silver lining addressing the mental health aspect with exercise, diet, sleep, and lifestyle will also simultaneously build some muscle and burn some body fat and improve your health and fitness. So generally speaking, Steve, I want you to approach because, uh, you know, fitness and all the things that encompass health or all the things that we know as fitness professionals that we can do to improve someone's health, they can be, uh, molded, shaped and modified, uh, I mean, almost an in infinite different amount of ways. Like you can, you can do it to push, uh, endurance or strength, or in your case, help with your mental state. So generally speaking, you're going to have to work out and be active and eat and sleep and live in a way to improve your mental fitness. So what does that look like? <clears throat> probably going to be, um, walks. You're probably going to do some walks where you find yourself being present. You're probably going to do some strength training, but not much, maybe a couple days a week in the gym. When you're doing the strength training, the idea is you, you mentioned that you got disassociative. Okay. So what I would do with the strength, your strength training can be an incredibly valuable tool to put yourself in your body. It could also be a way to get out of your body, right? So you can go to the gym and beat the crap out of yourself and not identify and really disassociate even more. Right? So what I would want you to do is go to the gym one or two days a week. Now, this is how you're going to start and just feel the full range of motion, feel the movement, feel the body, feel good. Your goal isn't to push, uh, the initial goal is not to push performance. Remember though, the performance and all the other stuff is going to follow along if you do this the right way. So when you go to the gym, it's literally, okay, I'm going to do four or five exercises. I'm going to focus on connecting through the movement. So as I'm doing the squat, for example, I want to feel the bar. I want to breathe through the movement. I want to feel my body feel good go through a nice, nice range of motion. The intensity is moderate at most, and that's it. And you're going to pick movements that allow you to feel most of your body. So squatting, deadlifting, overhead pressing, rowing, bench pressing, and then, you know, priming, stretching, uh, where you're, where you're really in your body, really trying to feel <laughs> your body. That's how I would start. As far as diet is concerned, uh, I would, the, the top of the priority is going to be easily digestible foods. Okay. Because when you're talking about the gut brain axis, what we want to do is minimize inflammation. So, uh, high protein is great for goals. Okay. But if you get past a certain point, you notice that it's causing digestive issues, then back off. It's, it's okay to sacrifice that 
for digestion. So everything that you eat, I want you to, to really think like, is this a really easy meal for me to digest? How am I going to feel afterwards? So you should feel very light. It should put very little stress on your body. So this may look like, you know, gluten-free um, grains, uh, proteins that are easily digestible for you. So for some people that's beef, other people it's fish, other people it's chicken. Um, well cooked, very well cooked, boiled vegetables to the point where it's like almost like a soup, very easy to digest. And then just don't worry about the strength, the fat, the muscle that will follow, but don't pay attention to it. I know that sounds funny, but don't pay attention to it. Pay attention on improving your mental health. And then the walks, like when you're walking, pick walks where you enjoy the scenery. You know, maybe it's a neighborhood you really like, or it's a place where you can look at, you know, greenery or something, something that you feel like you can enjoy. And on those walks, allow yourself to be present. You would be surprised how quickly your body will rebound if you approach it this way. Otherwise, it'll take a long time. So that's it. Just literally, generally speaking, all your attempts should be to improving your mental health with the tools that you know how to use. Yeah, I actually... I actually like um, map suspension, and my reasoning for that is um, a lot of the closed chain movement, and to be able to like feel your way through a lot of the exercise, like Sal was <laughs> describing. Um, and if intensity has always been, you know, the issue and overdoing it, um, to to be able to go through that full range of motion and just pay attention to all those little nuances where your body gets thrown off course, and you need to stabilize, and you need to control with your core, and um, in terms of like really feeling your way through and being able to, um, you know, get in your body and, and, and to be able to have that mind muscle connection. I think that's a, a pretty good place to start if you've been off, <coughs> you know, your, your plan for, would you say a year or something like that? So, um, for me, that's, that would be my suggestions to, to, to kind of throw that in there. So I want to address some of the things that you didn't say, but that were up on the, on your question that I'm looking at right now. I agree with Justin. I really like map suspension for where you're at right now. Plus I think that it addresses some of the mobility, shoulder instability stuff that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. So I think that will help support that. Um, so I'm, I'm on board with that. You asked questions about cutting or bulking right now. Um, I, to Sal's point, I wouldn't worry about trying to do either or. It would be just to feed feed your body when you're hungry. Eat whole foods. Uh, that would be that would be the advice mm -hmm. right now. Like you're 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 trying to take care of yourself. You're not trying to make moves with your physique yet right now. So cardio. You asked a question about that. Also, I'd say drop that. You know, you're not paying attention. To that. Walking would be your your form of cardio, like Sal was saying. Um, Body dysmorphia for most all your life. I mean, this is really important. Whenever we talk to anybody that has dealt with this, this is where the weighing and measuring and tracking the food and the scale and the mirror and all that stuff like that is not a healthy way to start your journey. So all those things are going out the window for me. I don't care about the scale weight. I don't want you getting hung up on exactly which. It's like literally to Sal's point of going in there, feeling your body, feeling good. Your, your measure of success is how you're feeling. Or do you have pos are you positive? Are you getting good sleep? Is work going well for you? Are, you? are you getting up and feeling energized? Do you have sustained energy throughout the day? Do you do you feel tight and strong? Do you feel mobile? Like these are the things that you're thinking about uh, throughout the day, and and then we'll build upon that. I think after suspension, uh, either a MAPS anabolic or a MAPS symmetry is probably the direction I'd go. But I, I like that as far as advice. Yeah, that's a good one. And and two other things I'll add, Steve. Um, make sure you go to bed at the same time and you wake up at the same time every day, really prioritize sleep. That's the most impactful mm -hmm. recovery thing you're going to do is get good sleep. Okay. So, you know, like an hour before prepare yourself for sleep, go to this bed at the same time, wake up at the same time. And then you're also in the Netherlands. So if you haven't had your vitamin D levels checked, I would oh, get them checked point. just to see if your vitamin D levels are low. Um, I'll guess they're probably not optimal. The only way to know is to get them checked. And if you suspect that they're low, then I would supplement with a good vitamin D3 supplement. And then there are other supplements that can help with your body's ability to adapt uh, to stress or recover from stress. Ashwagandha is one of my favorites. Most yeah, people yeah, respond I, really well to that. Go ahead. Yeah, actually, uh, actually, uh, I did order ashwagandha uh, on your behalf, you know, like because you guys uh, have, to have talked about that many times. Yeah. Uh, and I found also that because of a friend of mine who has uh, ADHD, I found out I have ADHD as well. 
and tends to help with that kind of stuff a lot too. Um, I think I think everything that you guys are saying are, is making a lot of sense. Uh, it, it it is something that that had been popping into my mind. Like, okay, maybe it's time for like that kind of approach to really drive it back to the base level first. And uh, I'm actually quite happy for you guys to kind of confirm that. Um, and also the uh, working through the range of motion because yeah. that has been a hard thing for me. And as you're saying, like you can also disassociate in the gym, you know, like even though you're supposed to be getting into your body for me, usually it would be a, a way to mentally get my frustration or anything out there. And then kind of not really paying attention to how I'm doing the exercise. Um, and that would usually screw me up, you know? So that's really great advice. I'm definitely going to pick up on that. Yeah. Uh, the Ashwagandha, that's a good one. I usually also take uh, magnesium, but like the good, the, the good kind, because I know a lot of magnesium is not, taken up in the blood uh, if it's like a bad bad supplement yeah um and, and so look into the vitamin d steve make sure because i you know yeah. being in the netherlands yeah. and you're you look like you have more of an olive complexion uh you might you, you might be deficient you, you know in in mm -hmm. d or low and that'll really it's make common things, out there yeah that'll make things uh really hard you know the last thing i'm gonna add is you know adam <laughs> said don't track don't weigh don't try and focus on muscle gain and fat loss it's okay. You, this is where the, the, the trust is going to have to come into play. It will progress. This is the irony of what we're talking about. You will progress in those things. If you don't look at them. Okay. If you look at them, they're not going to progress. So remind yourself of that. Like when you get that itch, like, Oh, like, am I progressing? I want to flex in the mirror. I want to measure my arm. I want to weigh myself. I want to, you know, get whatever. Remember, like, it's only going to improve if you don't look at it. Literally, like I got to not look at it and then I got to trust that it will improve. Now I'm going to, I'm going to tell you that you're probably 90 days out from feeling way different. So, you know, the question I have for you is, do you think you could tough this out for 90 days? Can you do this for three months? What's yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, that's, that's, that's the whole thing, right? Like after having this burnout, it's kind of like, well, I survived this, you know, so it, it, it's not like. It's not like it's going to be a massive uh, challenge uh, for me to to actually to do it this way. It's probably going to be easier for me than yeah. how I used to do it because I think how I used to do it was uh, ironically um, a way to sustain myself uh, physically to stay fit enough to do what I was doing. And at the same time, I was destroying myself because it was a way of like it wasn't a um, what you call it. Like it wasn't a sustainable way for me to, to go about working out because I used to work out five days a week, but I probably shouldn't have done that no. considering I was already mentally completely burned out, you well, know? So, well, Steve, we're going to send you map suspension, but here's what I want you to do. I'm going to give you 90 days. I want you to contact who you email to get on the show and I want to yeah. do a follow up with you. Okay. So I want you oh, to, great, yeah, I want you to, I want to follow up with you about 60 to 90 days out. So we can check in on you and see how you're doing and maybe help, help you stay kind of on track. Cause you know, you're going to talk to us. So let's do that. Oh, but we'll dude. send you map suspension for now. Dude, that'd be, that'd be amazing, man. Like I, I, I cause I need to kick it. Like I need, I need some kind of accountability for this mm -hmm. one. <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> you know, I figured, I, I yeah. thought it would probably be a good idea. So, and I'd love to follow yeah. up. I'd love to see where you're at in, uh, in about 60 to 90 days. So let's do that. Oh shit. Damn. That'd, that'd be awesome guys. Thank you so much. You got All it, right, man. Steve. All right, Thank Steve. You. Take care, man. Yeah. All right, you guys take care. You guys have fun. And um, yeah, man, keep doing what you do because you guys are saving lives, man. Oh, thank, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Appreciate All right. it. All right, cheers. <clears throat> you know what this reminds me of uh, as I was talking to him? Do you remember in uh, Super Mario Brothers where you're in the haunted house and there's yeah. those ghosts uh -huh. and they only come after you when you don't when look you at don't them? don't look at them, yeah. If you look at them, they freeze. Uh -huh. Literally. What reminded you of that? Uh, of, of what I, what we were talking about. Like, don't focus on the scale. Don't focus on the, uh, 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 cause I've been there. And when you start to focus on it, then it stops happening. You uh, literally have to not look at it. You have to like, not look at it, focus on health, focus on health, focus on health. And then, you know, a year later you look and you go, Oh crap. Like all that happened. That's so crazy. But the second you focus on it, then things go out the window because you start doing things to fuel the aesthetic drive or the body dysmorphia. Yeah, good goal for him. I mean, the program should last about that long, right? So a good yeah. goal for him is to just not even check till the end of it, right? So mm -hmm. I think, and I think if you if you have something in mind, like I mean, at least I'm better that way. Like if I'm like, okay, I'm not going to do any of the weight scale measure body fat and yeah. that stuff until the end of this program. All I do is focus on what the guys said, and then afterwards I'll check in. Yeah, 
I think that uh, he'll be all right. So hopefully he, he reaches back out and we'll see how he does. Next caller's Josh from California. Josh, what's happening, man? How can we help you? Hey, guys. How are you? Good. good. How are you doing? Uh, I'm hanging in there. Um, my my question was, uh, you know, I'm, uh, I'm getting a little bit older, almost 50, and uh, I can, you know, I can get my weight to fluctuate, you know, kind of how I want. I can go up 10, 15 pounds here and there, but I'm always stuck with this, you know, little tummy that kind of never goes anywhere. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm in a deficit. I feel like I'm kind of doing all this stuff that I'm supposed to be doing, you know, just kind of found you guys and, uh, you know, have been listening very intently to all your good advice. So I figured I'd call the pros. Yeah, no, good. Uh, so first of all, you look phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, so you, you said you're almost 50. You look like you're pretty lean now. Do you know what your body fat percentage is at? Uh, I've done a couple of the like uh, scans at the gym and stuff like that, and you know they'll say you know I've had it as low as nine, but uh, you know as high as twelve, thirteen. I think I'm probably in the you know fourteen, fifteen percent range. Okay. Have, have when, you, Josh? Did you, sorry to interrupt yourself, but I just this question is like I remember when this happened to me and it tripped me out. So did, have have you been listening for a long time? Or just recently? Yeah, yeah, a real long time since you, I got out of high school. Do you remember? Do you remember? Um, no, 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 listening. Sorry, it sounded like I said listening. Listening, I'm my listening to the show. Oh, yeah, listen, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, I got a cold right now, so it's my bad. So, did you uh, have you been listening to the show for a long time? I uh, know, probably just like maybe a month. Oh, okay. but, you know, I'm kind of okay. banging through your podcast. And stuff. Okay, okay. So I, so I've had this. I remember when this happened to me when I was getting ready to compete, and it would trip me out because I was like really lean, and I still had like this this pooch and this this belly fat that like everywhere else in my body looked lean. And really, what what I attribute that to is just I I'd never gone leaner than that. Like kind of nine percent was like the lowest I'd ever been in my life. I'd never done like six or five or something like crazy shredded. Oh yeah. And I found that even when I got all the way down, I still had this tiny bit left over. And then I and then I bulked up and I came back down. And it took like three times of doing a good clean bulk and then cutting a little bit lower, then getting clean clean bulk, then cutting a little lower until finally I hit a body fat percentage I'd never seen before. And that was the last place that it went. And it's still the first place to come back. So like right now I wouldn't I'm not in the single digit body fat percentage so that I carry body fat right there. So it just took me pushing to a, a a level low enough to finally get rid of that area. And everybody has this. It's just a different area. It's for everybody. Like it's like an area where you tend to get the body fat first and or if you carry any body fat, that's kind of where it, it, it hangs out. And until you get to a, a level of leanness that you've never seen before, it'll probably kind of always stay there until you go even lower. And so if you do a good job of getting leaner than you've ever been. And then when you come out of that diet to get you that lean and put on good, good lean mass and you don't go binge afterwards, you can get rid of that and hang, hang tight with that. Like after I competed, uh, that was gone for a really long time. Now I've, again, I've gone up in body fat percentage. So of course it's back, but I know what I have to do to get rid of it is I have to take my body to a leanness that it's, it just doesn't see what where when you were at 9%, what did it look like in that area? Was it gone or did you feel like you still had some? Oh no, it, it, it looked identical. Like it yeah. just, it, it never seems to, uh, yeah. never seems to budge whatsoever. And, okay. uh, yeah. Okay. Josh, what Adam's saying, so look, the, the first place you gain, it's the last place you lose it. Um, everybody has that spot. So you're going to have to try to get below 9%. And it's probably, you probably were ripped everywhere else except for there. So probably another percent or two from there, then you'll see that body fat come off. But I'm going to help you out a little bit as well with maybe optimizing your hormones a bit. Now this is, we're starting to split hairs here. Okay. But, but we are already splitting hairs with this question because you've got down to the lead. Yeah. You already look phenomenal. Yeah. So most, <laughs> mo yeah. Most men will not get to 9% body fat. It's really hard. It's a hard thing to do. Okay. So I'm going to give you two pieces of advice that I think will help. One is aesthetic. And the other one is literally to address the body fat, the stubborn body fat you see. So let's start with the aesthetic first. When I, uh, for years, would get down to a low, you know, single digit body fat percentage, I didn't have a six pack. It wasn't until I built the muscles of my abs that I could see the six pack. Now I got a six pack at 12% body fat, whereas before at 9%. 
I didn't have a six pack. Now, why is that? Well, when you develop the muscles of the of the core, they stick. The they stick out. Tightens they, the skin around them. Yeah, and they just stick out. You got visible muscles. So um, most people, when they train their core, don't train their core in a way that it builds the muscles, because we tend to believe the core for some reason is different than the biceps or the back, and so we do super high reps and low reps. So what I want you to do is pick. Um, high tension core exercises. Just give them no BS. I am. Okay. So I'm going to give you a, a program that's specifically designed to build the muscles of the core. And the idea, now form is crucial, okay? Because if you go heavy and then your form is crap, you're just going to build your hip flexors. But the program, I, I really break down the form. I want you to do exercises where you're doing like eight reps for your abs, where you're like building the abs. And then what'll happen is they'll stick out more and you won't have to get as lean to see it, and it'll look you'll look a lot leaner as a result. Now, here's the second part to address the belly fat. Now, this is splitting hairs, but again, because you've already gotten so lean, this may be an, uh, effective. I noticed in your question, you said that you have an eating window between two to eight. You do that every single day? Yeah, right. uh, yeah, pretty much. I mean, just with the way my lifestyle is, you know, that that ends up kind of being what it is daily. Okay. Every once in a while, I'll have a breakfast, but usually not. Okay. So, uh, again, this is splitting hairs, but we do know that uh, cortisol tends to promote fat storage in the midsection, okay? And we can see this in people as their hormones start to change as they get older. Women really notice this because they go through menopause, big hormone change, that they start to store body fat differently than they used to. So, it's like all of a sudden, you know, they used to store it a particular way. Now, they're storing it more on their belly. And they're like, what the hell? I used to just have it on my hips and my thighs. Now, it looks like it's on my belly type of deal. So hormones can influence where you store body fat. The way that you get cortisol to go down, one of the ways is to eat, okay? You want to eat. So if you wake up in the morning and cortisol is supposed to spike in the morning, but you don't eat, uh, you may be encouraging the levels to stay high a little too long. So what I want you to do is eat a protein fat meal or two before 2 p.m. It doesn't have to be a lot. It could literally be, you know, three scrambled eggs with some cheese, it could be a protein shake with a scrambled egg for the fat. So a fat protein type meal with a little bit of carbs. Insulin opposes uh, cortisol. So you could throw in some fruit there. One or two small meals and do that while you're doing this process that we're talking about. And then put yourself in a calorie deficit. And the, and the way that you should do the deficit to maximize what you're looking for is a three to one ratio of cut to maintenance. Okay. So you'd be in a deficit for three weeks, do a one week of maintenance, three week deficit, one week maintenance. It's a slow process, but this is going to ensure that you don't lose tons of muscle. And can of I, course, strength train the whole time. Can I, can I counter just a little bit of that? Yeah. Just a tiny bit. Like I, everything he's saying I'm, I'm on board with, I actually would like for you to run the no BS six pack a program we're going to send you in a in a bulk for a little bit to help you first build, yeah first yeah, good idea to build the abs and then then follow that advice like so maybe like a four week yeah four bulk. weeks four week cycle following the maps the the no bs six pack abs we're going to send over to you get try and build your abs like you never have before like you're trying to get them strong yeah follow that program to a t to build your abs in a slight calorie surplus. So you're trying to gain at this point, but not a lot. You're just trying to stay hot, well-fed or a little bit above, right? So don't worry, but we're not worrying about body fat percentage. We're not worrying about weight right now. Yeah, I love this. Then transition to exactly what he said and go in a cut and then take yourself to a leanness you've never seen. I guarantee if you go 1% to 2% lower than you've ever been before, after you do that with the no BS app, you will, you will see this go. It'll go. Yeah promise you that yeah That's jo the josh i uh i mean i've experienced uh, same thing like i uh, for me i'll get lean in my arms shoulders legs that's first then i start to get it off my obliques then it comes off my back yeah low back and then the last place for me to lose it is right around my belly button and it is what's great say yeah. okay and what's crazy about it is i'll get down to i don't know 10 10 ish percent body fat and then every percent I go down off that, it's like it comes right off that area. But up until I get to about 10%, it doesn't move. It's like the same. Everything else gets lean and veiny. And I got this little bit of stomach body fat. Then I get down like 10-ish. It's like every percent, like I go down to nine, eight, seven. It's like, oh, it's all coming off that area. But the, the approach we're giving you is the one that's going to minimize any muscle loss. 
And again, we're going to try and build the abs. And what you, what might happen if you do this right is you'll get down to nine, ten percent. You won't need to get any leaner because yeah. the the midsection will be more developed. It'll just look leaner. Okay. Cool. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much for uh, taking my call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got it, man. Yeah, keep us posted. I'm curious to see how this goes. This was a, a really uh, stubborn thing for me, and it took me a, a long time to figure pieces together. It didn't happen until I was in my 30s before I finally figured this piece out. What does so. your normal workout look like, by the way? Because we're going to send you the ab program, but what does your normal strength training look like? Uh, you know, I I, uh, I lift every day. I just kind of do. You know, I kind of settled into this routine where I just go do a little bit of cardio. I lift. You know. 45, 50 minutes, and then uh, I hit the sauna, and then I'm out of there. Okay, and uh, are you when I'm lifting, I'm uh, you know I'll do like back one day, chest, uh, oh, arms, that's... core, shoulders, kind of. Oh, bro! Can, um, we, can we just do like a, just keep it rolling? Can you if if we give you another program, will you follow it? Yeah, because I think if you did maps anabolic in yes, combination with yes. the ab program, they work perfectly. Yes, and, and it, it's. It, it's so different from what you're doing right now. Yeah, it'll you'll a, get some muscle. It'll be a novel stimulus, which will really help build muscle during this four-week bulk and then and then do the cut. Here's how you combine the two, okay? There's foundational workouts in both programs. Alternate the foundational workouts. So one day it's MAPS anabolic foundational workout. The next day it's the six-pack program foundational workout. The next day is MAPS anabolic. So it's five days a week you'll be in the gym. Two of those days will be focused on the core. The other three are full body. And I think it's novel enough where you're going to see some muscle gain with yes. that too. Okay. Yeah. I love changing it up, but I also, I can definitely follow a routine, man. And I can just get in there and grind on it. So okay. perfect. Okay. What do you guys recommend? Yeah. Yeah. Yo, if you I trust the process right here, we got you. I yeah, promise. We'll, we'll send those to you. Yeah. I, I trust you guys. Awesome. Right. Thanks. Josh. I'm sorry. What was that? No, no. We just said awesome. Oh yeah. Thank you. Yep. You got it, man. All right. Take care. Take it easy. So I, first of all, I want to, I, I love the fact that we get to do that every once in a while. Cause that's such a unique question. Yeah. Cause he's and, figured out, it looks like he's figured out a lot of the other stuff. Oh yeah. And, it's, and that's the part I wanted to make clear to the audience, right? Cause sometimes, uh, we don't talk about stuff like this. Um, and there's a reason why, because I think 90% of the people don't need advice in this direction, right? right? They think they want this advice because they, but they haven't figured out the big, that's right. Now. And, and so he's kind of an exception to the rule, right? The guy looks incredible. At, I mean, and if he was my client, I'd also be reminding him that, right. As we're training all the time, like, Hey bro, you know, you look really good, right? You're yeah. 50 years old and you look fucking phenomenal. Right. So, but you know, Hey, you got a lot of things dialed in and, and you're curious about uh, that. And I, I've experienced that personally. So I know it's like, to feel, feel like, Hey man, I'm so lean, but this little area Same. just won't go. It's always the inner thighs. <laughs> <laughs> Last to go right, for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everybody really hate it. Where do you store most of your, 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 you know, you're like, I mean, you're obviously built like everywhere. A tank. Is it really just evenly yeah, dispersed? It's just, it's just all over. It, <laughs> it actually, it, you know, you actually do. Uh, you, you know, that's part of why I think you look good fuller. Like I, like if if you and I increased our body fat percentage the exact same amount, yeah. you look way better. Adam would I. just get a belly. I would, I just, <laughs> I, and I lose my arm, like my arms and legs go, and then I get a belly. It's like just the, like a, a bleh. blob of clay that just yeah, like exactly. you, yeah. you, just you add five percent to your body and it looks evenly distributed. Bro, I will. <laughs> You're that, you know what? You're like the chick that all the chicks hate. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, goes right to your tits your and boots. ass. You ever, all your body fat goes to your tits and ass, yeah. bro. Just, yeah. <laughs> like I got plenty of junk. <laughs> junk Dude, in my trunk. it annoys. Listen, when I would mess with this, literally, this is how I, my extremities get cross striations yeah. before I would get a six pack. Like cross striations of my quads. Yeah. Yeah. I get striations of my glutes, but I got a pooch. Did, no, this like, tripped me oh. out because uh, I had never really been below like nine, 10% yeah. body fat. Yeah. And, you know, so even, and, and I remember as a kid, like, so as a kid, like my abs was my thing, right? Cause I didn't have arms. I didn't have legs. Might as well have abs. Yeah. So I'd be like, you know, <laughs> show, show your abs off all the time. And then I got yeah. older, put on a little bit of body fat. And then when I got lean like that, it just stayed right there. And I was like, what the fuck? And I was shredded. Like just yeah. like you said, striation in my legs and arms. Yeah, and, was, same here. <laughs> and then I had this little, this little pooch thing and it didn't go. <laughs> Until I hit body fat percentage I'd never seen yeah. before. And then, you know? you know, what's weird about this? This is all observational. Zero science to support this. <laughs> Once you get rid of it, it's easier to do it afterwards. It it's oh, almost yeah. like... It probably has to do with white brown, white fat, brown fat. Maybe it moves into something easier. But hmm. once I got rid of it, it was easier to get rid of each time. Well, I I agree too. And also, what happens is you get that shredded. So you finally you force the body to go find any last bit of body fat you have anywhere because mm -hmm. you get to so low a body fat percentage. 
then if as long as you stay on your routine and training, when you add back the calories, it gets partitioned to building muscle. It's it weird. Yeah. It doesn't go there. And so if you can if you can get rid of it and then stay consistent with your training yep. and not overindulge on the diet, you you should be able to maintain it off. Our next caller is Lucan from California. Lucan, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey guys, how's it going? Good. Good. Hey. Awesome. So uh, I have this written out. I'll just get into it. Uh, first, wanted to say thank you. Um, my friend introduced me to Mind Pump about two years ago, and I haven't looked back. I uh, made progress physically, mentally, and basically all aspects of my life. I don't have the exact words to describe the positive influence you have on young men like myself, but a thank you to the four of you and the entire Mind Pump team is well deserved at the very least. Thank you. Yeah. Sweet. Awesome, man. Um, so now for the selfish part. Uh, in the email thread, it said not to change the question. However, some time has passed. I believe that the context that I have to add uh, will aid in your analysis and recommendation. Uh, so I'm on the last week of MAPS Anabolic. Uh, the program has been amazing. I switched my eating habits to uh, you know incorporate the whole meals, uh, minimally processed, and I've really seen a lot of strength gains and aesthetic developments, especially in the shoulders, uh, lower body and arms. Uh, my girlfriend sort of wants credit for the lower body stuff, but I'm going to attribute it to you guys. <laughs> yeah, don't, um, don't tell her though. We'll, we'll, we'll make sure. She <laughs> that's right. Trust yeah. me on this. My question is two pronged and the second one will be based off of like the first answer, but I really just wanted to look at what I should program next. I have my eyes on advanced, but I also think an explanation of my goals may influence your recommendation. Um, right now I'm strength training so I can strength train for the future and the rest of my life. Um, I would love to be doing pull-ups and hitting the gym well into old age. So given the fact that I'm 23, how do I program my workouts now, uh, with that in mind? Oh, good. Yeah. Great question. All right. I'm looking at your question. You mind if I go through some of the stuff you said in there? Yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, you, you I mean, you got a lot of stuff dialed in. You're eating mostly whole natural foods. Uh, you looks like you're hitting your protein intake. You're walking after meals. Um, your sleep. Nice. Here's here's where people your age always screw up. But it says here you're going to bed at 10 and waking up at 6. So you're prioritizing your sleep. Yeah, that's good. Uh, you got great results with MAPS Anabolic. The you're way also, you he's also playing in a men's league, so you're taking care of like your athleticism too. So you're doing a lot of because I would have actually moved you into like performance, uh -huh. but if you're doing stuff like that, yeah, if you're already moving, yeah, yeah, multiple planes. And you're you're, you're um, <clears throat> you know, the way you work out now is the way you're always going to work out. Now that doesn't mean the workout's going to look the same. It means the considerations are going to be the same. Is this appropriate? Is this uh, going to work for my body? Knowing the context of my life, my recovery, and all that stuff. At your age, everything you're doing, you look very healthy. You look like you're you're you don't look overtrained. You got great results with MAPS Anabolic. I think Anabolic Advance will be fine. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, you just got to be really good with your protein and your sleep because Anabolic Advance is gonna is definitely another level of intensity. You may need to. I don't. I don't think. I'm not saying you will, but you may need to pay attention to outside activity while you're doing MAPS Anabolic Advanced because if you find doing the men's league it, with Anabolic Advance is too much then one is going to have to give. Otherwise, you're just going to be throwing too much at your body. But I think there's – you'll be totally fine with anabolic advanced. And are you going to try and bulk? Are you still trying to, are you trying to, trying to gain muscle still? Yeah, so I, I got to like 200 pounds. Um, I'm kind of – I used to fluctuate between 190 and 200, and now it's like 200, 205. So I wow. think, you know, I'm in a prime to really just like – yeah. Either take keep down the scaffolding or just keep, you know, maintaining where I'm at. I would, um, I would go in, a, I would go in a little bit of a bulk, be consistent yeah. though. Don't go crazy. Cause sometimes yeah. what people will do is they see the strength gains, the weight gain, and they start to do this kind of dirty bulk, uh, mm -hmm. which you'll gain muscle on a dirty bulk, but you're also going to gain a lot of body fat and it'll make it hard for you to, to bring it down. So I would be consistent with a nice, clean bulk maps anabolic and the gains that you got in anabolic, you're going to see now amplify so long as your recovery is going to do that, anabolic advance is going to make your muscle gains really take off. I want to, awesome. I, I want to address the, uh, I want to be able to train till, you know, old age and be able to do all this stuff. The thing, and you're, you're perfect right now. Like everything you're doing, I think is a great, great balance. The thing that the most common thing that changes as, as we start to get older, uh, is the athletic pursuits that you're doing right now. And yeah, so that's, that's where we'll, that's where real consideration will need to go into your programming right now. If you, you train kind of like a bodybuilder in the gym and you outside, you play sports, you're getting this nice, well-balanced, 
you know, not only physique aesthetically, but also functionally because you're moving in all these different planes. Uh, you're also training a little bit of endurance and cardio in there. And so you got this beautiful balance. When that starts to shift and change is when you have to then become cognizant of it and go, okay, how do I need to make uh, implement some of that stuff into my training routine now because I'm not doing that outside activity. So long as you maintain this, uh, you're going to be okay. You're, I mean, you're going to, you're going to, I mean, do it as long as you, you possibly can or until you stop, but just be mindful of that of, cause this was me in my twenties, like all the way until I was almost 30. In fact, it was not yeah. till, uh, 29 when I stopped playing in intramural leagues for basketball. But I'll tell you what made, what happened was I had four seasons in a row of major injuries. And the reason why was because I kept pushing the weights to get big and bulkier. Cause I liked the look but I still love playing basketball. It was too much. It was yeah. too much. I got to a point where, you know, 230 pound me couldn't move on the court the the way. And I just wasn't doing the work necessary to be the basketball player that I wanted to be. And my body kept injuring me and telling me that yet I was still ignorant and kept ignoring it. So just be mindful of those things. If you, if you keep pushing the weight at some point, it will start to probably conflict with whatever sport you're doing. And so if you start noticing nagging pain, joint pain, or potential injuries or injury happens, be aware that that's, that's what's, what's going on. Yeah. I think too, like a, another consideration, um, we have map, map symmetry is, is something I, I would suggest as like a way for you to kind of come back and reassess, um, in, in terms of like, uh, just joint, uh, stability health. And then also to like how you're performing left side versus the right side and you know where there's any discrepancies and so if you just cycle that in once twice a year you know in between your other programs i think you get a lot of benefit out of that too so that way too when you're going forward um you can kind of uh you know bring that all back up so you're performing at your highest yeah i think you're you, you, there's a question too about trigger sessions up here with anabolic advance don't do trigger sessions however if you like to do like movements throughout the day mobility yeah. You, you'll never go wrong with mobility. You know, here's the difference between you now and when you get older. Let's say you focus on MAPS anabolic advance for three months. You stop doing outside sports. You're like, I just want to get muscle right now. Totally fine. You'll lose some athletic ability. It'll bounce back real fast, though, after anabolic advance. If you go and play and after a week or two, it'll come right back. As you get older, that hap that's a lot harder to do because your body literally, there's an old saying, if you don't use it, you lose it. Okay, that is one of the best fitness sayings that that exists because literally your body will get rid of abilities that aren't practiced. So what you know what they were talking about, like as you get older, if you stop running, you literally your body will forget how to run. Literally, like you just you're just not you'll have to train it back, and it takes a long time. If you stop running now for a few months because you're lifting, and then you go run, it'll feel weird for a week, but it'll bounce back. You try that at 45, it's gonna take you three months to get back into it. That's the main difference. So. That's kind of what we're all, you know, mentioning. That's why I like mobility uh, during the day while you're doing anabolic advance. But I, it would be fun for. Are you taking any supplements? Do you take creatine? Uh, yeah. So I, I take uh, creatine, uh, ashwagandha, fish oil, and uh, colostrum post workout. Oh, you're good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah you're, you're good, bro. You're doing a lot of good things. Yeah, man. you're doing good at your age. You're doing great. I, I can see you getting up to a good two fifteen. Yeah. Uh, with some good lean body mass. Boys and I will send over advanced anabolic. Awesome. Awesome. That would be great. And and real quick, just with those, those trigger sessions. So I want to make sure I'm not overdoing it on the off days. So stay away from the trigger sessions, but is it like, okay. I mean, mobility, focus on the mobility, um, focus on like the walking and like the, the cardio. Is it okay to like, you know, get hot, like get in the sauna yeah, all, do oh, the, yeah. the plunge oh, yeah. on those days? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's all good. Yeah, yeah. Sauna's great. You know, I tell you what, if you don't have like a little mobility routine, um, look up, look up the prime pro webinar I did. And that's like a good, like general, just yeah, follow the base. What's the yeah. link? Is it maps? Prime pro prime pro webinar.com prime pro webinar.com. Webinar if you haven't watched yeah, and it, I have, I have okay. prime pro, so okay. I'll be definitely diving in. I haven't really like looked into it, but definitely we'll get into that and, and learn more. Okay. You got well, the it. webinar gives you structure. So if you want something to follow and I, I take Perfect. you through, yeah. So yeah. check it out. Okay. All right. Luke. Awesome. All right, yeah. Man. Thank you so much guys. Keep up the great work. Thank yeah, you. You too, man. All right. All right. Bye. Love to get my hands on that kid. And good, his client. good kid. Right? Good yeah. kid. Wouldn't that be fun? Good oh kid. yeah. He's doing yeah. all this stuff now. I, I, I could put, 
10 pounds of lean body mass on him if I could train him and watch <laughs> him. This is why I wish fast. I this is why like I wish it would something super like, athlete something like this go, existed yeah. when we were that age, yeah. dude. I was so off on so many things. Oh, I oh yeah. my god, dude. I He's geez. so far ahead. How much dude, time? He's getting sleep, eating whole foods, like I yeah. mean, it's already those are no, But would you have listened? Kid. Maybe if they were like the top podcast I would have listened. Yeah, no, yeah, totally. Yeah. No, Although no, I had I told you guys a story. I, I had would, a jacked fucking bodybuilder tell me what to do and I thought he was bullshitting me. Yeah. He literally was like 3 days a week lift full body. Eat a lot of uh, protein, whole natural. I'm like, okay, buddy. Yeah. You don't want to tell me the secret. That's fine. You know, it's funny because like my my girlfriend at the time, her dad, who was like this total hippie guy, was like really trying to get me on whole foods and all this stuff. And I was like, no. You know, I was <laughs> still eating Carl Jr. And, you know, I was like, ah, this hippie doesn't know what he's talking yeah, about. Yeah, that's a good guy. I don't know. I wish Maybe. I would listen. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't think um, me going back in time could tell me what to do. But I think me... If I had found this podcast, that's that would have done. That would have been right, the authority, right? That's yeah. how it would have worked. It would have been like, oh, I like these guys. Oh, he's like, you know, what I'm saying, yeah, yeah, and then yeah. and then okay, I'm so, and then it probably I'd have to hear it yep. a few times, and yep. then I would, but definitely not like just me coming back and saying you got to do this, but yeah. yeah, fuck off, guy. <laughs> <laughs> Our next caller's Jennifer from New Jersey. Hi, Jennifer. How can we help you? Hi, guys. So I have been after pull-ups and chin-ups for years. I have a strong back. I have no problem activating my lats on a lat pull-down, row machine, during an active hang on negatives or isometrics. When I try to perform a pull-up or chin-up from a hanging position, I have so much trouble activating my lats. It's almost like my brain doesn't know how to pull my elbows down and back to get myself pulled up. And I'm not sure if this is because I have hypermobility in my shoulder joints, but I do a lot of different variations to become stronger in all positions, negatives, holds, assisted pull-ups and chin-ups. And more recently, I've been doing chin-ups to where I lower myself as low as I can go. It's not a fully locked out position. I feel like I'm cheating the reps, um, but low enough so that I can still pull myself back up. I know I'm strong. I have a 315 pound back squat. I can bench Good 130 Lord. pounds and I get so frustrated that I cannot pull myself up from a strict position. Um, so I would love any recommendations you guys have to be able to go from a dead hang um, to a chin up or pull up. And I've actually attached a video of two chin up singles and two negatives. Yeah, We're, wa we're watching it right Jennifer, now. We can't, we can't help you. Yeah. Do you You're think already, you, got, you, got, you got to suck at something? <laughs> yeah. Listen, so. listen, do you think you might be a little too hard? Everybody's on yourself? got crippled. Yeah, right? I think so too. What do, you, what do you think? Do you think you're being uh, a little too hard? Uh, maybe a little bit, but I feel like it's one of those like skills that I just want to be able to pull myself up yeah. and okay. it's frustrating. You, you I've don't been get trying be, for such a long time. You don't get to be great at everything. Yeah. Just take it on the chin. Yeah, we'll talk you to you later. Yeah. 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 You no, look, look, here's the deal. Okay. <clears throat> All right. This is straight up, by the way. You squat 315. I saw your video of a pull up. I can tell you have a well-developed lower body glutes. Looks like quads. Those aren't helping you on a pull up. So, yeah. <laughs> so you're you're yeah, pulling up. The weight you got some yeah. You got some some muscle on your lower body. It looks phenomenal, and you're pulling that up. So that's going to make it hard. Okay. Number two, your question is activating your lats, or is it that you want to do more pull ups? Because we're not going to be able to do both at first. Okay. You're not going to be able to like have a mind muscle connection to one of the muscles involved in an exercise where you're doing singles. When you're doing singles and it's a hard exercise. Do not try to isolate or connect. You're just yeah, trying that's to a movement. You're just trying to perfect the movement. You don't get to connect and isolate until you're able to do so many reps, and then you can slow down, squeeze the lats, and start to feel things out. Okay, so I'm going to give you a little bit of advice with to help you with the pull ups, and that has nothing to do with getting your lower body to stop being developed. I think you should keep doing that. Don't do that because I think that's more important. But with your pull ups. I don't mind you. I would, in fact, encourage you to jump into the pull-up and to do a few more reps. So instead of starting from the dead hang, jump and do a pull-up and do sets of like three or four reps. Then as you slowly get stronger, do less of a jump and progressively overload yourself until you get to the dead hang and you can do more. The last thing I'm going to add is uh, frequency. Um, instead of training pull-ups on back day only, uh, I want you to reduce the volume of back day. So maybe cut the volume down by half on back day. And then every day, two or three times a day, I want you to practice two or three pull-ups twice or three times a day. 
So get a pull-up bar in your house, walk up to the pull-up bar, jump up, do a couple pull-ups, and then leave it alone. Nothing crazy, nothing hard, but just practice that like twice a day on a daily basis. But you have to cut down the volume of your back workout to make mm. up the difference. And then you should see yourself get stronger with yeah. pull-ups in a, in a pretty good good amount of time. I also have a little bit different. So um, have you ever done any scapular pull-ups? Do you know what that is? Yes, I have in the past. And again, like it feels like I can do it. I can do a scapular pull-up. But if I were to try to go from a scapular pull-up into a regular pull-up, I can't get out of that. Like I can't. Like I can't activate further. Right. Once you have to bend your elbows, like it's sort of a disconnect there. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. Then just do the scapular pull-ups. Yeah, just the scapular pull-ups and, and focus on getting that that strength there in terms of uh, generating force. So really, there, there seems to be a, a loss of connection that we can enhance that by just, you know, adding a bit more tension. Like as you're in those scapular circles and you're going through the, um, you know, the, the, the circle of it, um, you want to really try and squeeze and generate as much, uh, strength as you can, uh, in, in those, in, in that movement. So, uh, I would work on that. Um, and then to like, I, I mean, it really, it's just repetition at that point. So the guy, the guys, that, <clears throat> I don't have anything to add to their advice, except for, I would just be, I would be in your head more. I just tell you who gives a fuck. That's what yeah. I would say. I'm like, you're, you're literally the, the squatting and deadlifting that you're doing like that, that amount of muscle on your legs is making it incredibly difficult to, to pull your body. And, and it's it. not just, like you're out of balance. You have a very no, well balanced physique. Yeah. That's why I would say, I don't give a fuck. I would literally, if you're yeah. my client, I'd be like, I don't even care that you can't do the, you know, five pull-ups who cares. You know what I'm saying? What you're do, what you're accomplishing, uh, outside of the pull-ups is so incredible that, that it just, you, there's give and take in this game. Like you're not always going to be awesome at all the different movements that are out there. And a lot of times if you get really, really like you're, when you talk about your school, what you can do squatting is like in the one percentile you're so that, and that works against somebody being good at pull-ups. If you're, uh, if you are, okay. In fact, think of the, the 1% of men squatters. They're not good at pull-ups. They're, they're not good at pull-ups. <laughs> no. Why? Because yeah. they have incredible m legs. Their legs are massive. Their glutes are massive. And then they're strong down there because they, they're so good at that. And so you're just not going to be great at pull-ups. And I wouldn't care so much about pull-ups that I'd want you to go lose 10 pounds of muscle in your legs. They look phenomenal. So... I would just be telling you, know, you like, who you, cares? That's what I'd be at, telling you. <laughs> at this point, if you really, really, like, you're like, oh, this is a fitness goal. I've always wanted to do this. I hear you guys, but I think it's cool. I want to go after it. You're going to, at this point, have to modify your all your training towards the chin-up. Right. Mm -hmm. So this is not like, uh, hey, can I keep doing what I'm doing and then yeah. add stuff? You'd have to sacrifice other things. You're just going to have to, yeah, you're going to have to take volume off other areas. And I wouldn't and, want you and, to do and, that. And, 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 and look, if you were my client and you said, hey, what do you think? I'd say, who cares? Yeah. But if this is, look, I get this. You might have this goal and be like, I just want to do this. Yeah. I don't care. I, I hear what you're saying. I just want to do this. Then what you do is you reduce volume in other areas. You don't focus on building in other areas. You literally cut the volume, cut the sets, practice pull-ups on a daily basis, and try to get stronger at the pull-ups. Give that's yourself right. eight to twelve weeks of that, and you'll get stronger at it. Yeah. You'll definitely get stronger at it if that's if it's that important to you. How's how's to your stability in your overhead position? What do you I'm mean? pretty good. Um, I think I do have a little bit more of like hypermobility. I'm stable. Like I can do a, a overhead squat. Oh wow! Position wise, totally fine. Oh, okay. Um, but it almost like if I'm like hanging, I kind of like pop like right back here mm -hmm. and I like, like almost like lock out. What's the hardest part? Is it the depression of the shoulder blade or like, where do you feel like there might be a little bit of instability? Um, I would say like if I, as soon as I go to try to bend my elbow, oh, okay. like I can okay. do, I can do a chin up if I'm like 90% locked out. Mm hmm. Kind of like what Sal was saying, I have been kind of jumping into it and just l allowing myself to get as far down as I can. But if I'm 100% locked out, I'm not getting back up unless I have to like, unless I jerk myself out of the hang position. Okay. Yeah. You're, I mean, literally. I was curious about that, whether to recommend overhead um, uh, carries. carries with that as well. Yeah. yeah. You're, Jennifer, you, if you tailored your all your programming towards getting better at the pull-up. So cut the volume on your back workout, cut the volume on your shoulders, your chest, your lower body, practice pull-ups on a daily basis, 
um, you're going to get better at the pull-ups. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, you could totally get better at the yeah. pull-ups. But I mean, at, at, at what to sacrifice this amazing thing that you've built? Like, yeah. I would. That's where I would be. I would be getting onto you all day. Yeah, I'd be but like, I, but I mean, I'm like, like, if you, if like, if we were in a pull-up competition, I'd go win it with you. I'd say, this is what we're going to do. We're going to completely cut out legs for the next two months, totally. and we're going to practice pull-ups, reduce the volume on your, and we're going to get. I'll get you fucking 15 pull-ups. Mm -hmm. But I like, but then I'm going to lose all that great work. You'd, nah, I wouldn't let you. Yeah. I mean, it would just. I would just say forget but, this. Uh, but I get it. Look, I get it. I've done this with goals yeah. where I've sacrificed. I like it, it, it's not. I get obsessed with some things like this. So, so I get it. There's a quality. You can do it. Yeah, yeah just to prove yourself. So I mean, there's no wrong answer here. You, you know, but we're giving. You know, we're like if you know if you were our client and you came to us, you said, "Hey, should I?" Yeah, we'd be like, "Why?" That's yeah. that would be my answer. Who cares? But you really want to do it? That's the, the advice I gave you is the way to do it. And you'll get there if you do that. Mm -hmm. If you try to add stuff to your current routine, you're not going to, it's not going to happen. No. You're going to have to cut uh, volume at other areas for sure. Yeah. I always said for a long time, I was like, my lower body is just too heavy to pull myself up. And I guess there is actual truth to that. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. You ever seen Justin do a pull up? Absolutely. <laughs> it's just, it's just, I hate pull-ups, dude. <laughs> well, and, and you have to like back to my point of you being at 1%. I mean, there's a handful of chicks I've ever trained that can squat, not even a handful, 315. Yeah, that's stupid. That's incredible. Yeah, that's really like strong. you're yeah. do, you, so, do you compete or is this just for fun? It's just for fun. I just love being strong. Yeah. Were yeah, you an yeah. athlete? You an athlete? Did you compete in any sports or you just like to lift? I played volleyball. Um, but yeah, I just kind of I just lift. My husband is a um he graduated with an exercise science degree. He trains athletes, so I just have him do all my programming for me. He's doing a good um, job. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Your tell your yeah. husband we said he's doing a good job. Yeah. How tall are you and what's your I body will. weight, if you don't mind me asking, Jennifer? Yeah, I'm five foot seven and I'm about one fifty five yeah, right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're 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 you know, girls that do a lot of pull ups are like five one, hundred pounds. It's and it's because they're tiny. And not that you're yeah. bit you have a well proportioned lean physique. Yeah. It's just you're using your body weight, you know? So like the best the best pull up people in the world tend to be really just tiny people. Yeah. And because you're lifting your body, I bet you could do a pull down with a tremendous amount of weight to get that in comparison to other, yeah. you know, yeah. exactly. So have you, have you ever, have you ever considered doing a powerlifting meet? I have, but I just don't know if I can bring myself to push myself to that, that extreme. And I feel like my squat and my deadlift, like way out do my bench. So what? So that's yeah. a, so it's a three lift. Bench? It's a yeah. three lift total. Yeah. If we send you maps, powerlift, yeah. And you follow it. You're I'd love to strong in the other list. I'd love You're to follow really up ridiculous. with you. Yeah, I think you could go in right now cold and actually do pretty damn well. Yeah, yeah. Have you, you want you want a program? You want to follow Mass Power Lift and then follow up with us? Yeah, that'd be awesome. All right, Jennifer, we'll send that over. I to would you. love. Right, so I, I like this plan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This I cool. like this plan way better. Yeah. I'd like to see. Yeah, I like. Who to cares see about pull-ups? Yeah. Yeah. Pull-ups <laughs> for the birds. Yeah, we'll send that to you. Okay, and then if you follow it, follow up with us. I'd love to see where your where your numbers go. Yes, please. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much, guys. You got it. Thank you. Another case of Bro. Uh, I'm not perfect enough, or I don't know. Yeah. I have to figure. So I get it. By the way, you know, we all no. We're all I, like this and ourselves. you're right. I know. Oh. Like, I'm, I'm sure I'm going to upset some people because I said what I said. But the the truth is this: like, okay, listen. If you uh, if you want to get really good at pull ups, and I am, we're all this way. We're all this way. Yeah, we'll like, pick something. Yeah, I'm like, oh, I want to get real. Like, okay, when I decided I'm going to get become mobility guy. Like I knew I was going to sacrifice a look and a physique. Doesn't mean you can't have kind of both, but it's like if I'm going to get really great at that, that became my all focus. Yeah, yeah. I let go of everything else. I'm not going to worry about that. I'm going to get so good at that, and I did. And and of course, I wasn't quite as strong, and I wasn't. I didn't look as great as I did on. Who cares though? That was my goal, and so I, that. And so she has to have the same attitude if she really wants to get good scoring. And I'm like, why? I mean, unless you're going to well, go also, do this. Also, like, you know, and I only asked this because she seemed pretty confident, so I thought it was okay because some people are sensitive. But she's 5'7", 150 pounds. She's lean. Based on that video, she looks like she's in the 17% body fat. She's obviously very fit, but she's not a 5'90 pound girl. Yeah, so we, to do two pull-ups at that body weight with her lower body, I mean, she has some glutes on her. 5'7 is long. So that's she what I'm got, saying. She's got a long yeah, way to pull dude. up. That's, that's so she's, she's strong. Not, yeah, so she's got a, a, one of the strongest lower bodies we've we've had ever call in before as a yeah. female. And then she's also 5'7", so she's got a long way to probably right. travel. That's for, right. Like, that is, like, yep. so difficult, yeah, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's why it's I so see, hard. <laughs> I hope she does the powerlifting meet. Oh, I yeah. would love to see her Hell yeah, dude. 
squat and deadlift and see totally. what she and her, puts and then her husband does her program. He's obviously doing a yeah. good job. So yeah. Yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. Good deal. Look, if you like the show, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out all of our free guides. We have free fitness guides that can coach you and help you with your fitness goals. You can also find all of us on social media. Justin is at Mind Pump Justin on Instagram. I'm at Mind Pump DeStefano. And Adam is at Mind Pump Adam. 